is sick, right. like deathly ill. <laughs> so she will not be. All right, we'd like to, I'd like to call the um, budget committee meeting tonight to order, and we'll ask the city recorder to do the roll call. Bruce Anderson. Ellen Barker. Here. Ron Burson. Here. Kathy Clark. Here. Charlotte Clark. Here. Kim Freeman. Here. J.D. Gillis. Here. Roland Herrera. Jerry McGee. Here. Marlene Parsons. Here. Laura Reed. Here. Amy Ryan. Nelson Sussman. Here. Thank you. And Jonathan Thompson. Here. And Bruce Anderson. Mm. Bruce just Again. Here. Here. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> All right. Do we have a list of folks who would signed up to testify? All right, first on the list is Rich Palmer. Welcome. Uh, as a reminder from last time, everyone gets five minutes. You'll get a yellow light at one minute, and then um, at, uh, and, the re and the red light comes on. Please complete what you're saying, or otherwise, I, like I said last time, somebody throws something at you. So please introduce yourself for the record and take it away. I'm Richard Palmer. I've been living in Kaiser for a million years. So, closer, closer. So, Richard Palmer, Kaiser resident since 1978 yeah. and on the Parks Foundation board. Marlene Parsons, Kaiser resident. Okay, both of us are here tonight representing the Parks Foundation. As many of you know, there's an event coming in August. You know, that's the Eclipse event. The Parks Foundation, with um, the support of the city of Kaiser, actually they're one of our sponsors in the Kaiser Times, um, we're having an event at the park, a three-day event, which will include camping, um, concerts, um, activities, and so forth and so on. And, it, and basically, this is a money, money uh, raiser for the Parks Foundation, which, you know, as you know, all the money that the Parks Foundation raises come back to the city, comes back to the city. Um, what we're asking for is um, $8,000 to help offset some of the, the – can you hear me? Oh, ongoing costs associated with starting up this, you know, getting um, the uh, porta potties and some, you know, tipping fees for the trash. A lot of things we are getting donated, but there are things we need to pay for. Uh, by by paying for this with the eight thousand dollars, we're hoping to give back to the city forty thousand. So, you're you're paying eight and getting forty, or essentially thirty two. So. Um, the event, like I said, will be starting on Friday, August uh, 17th, and it will conclude at the end of the um, eclipse on Monday morning, the 21st. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. He's shy, so he doesn't want <laughs> Dr. Mason. Yes, uh, Marlene, uh, if I understand it, the 8,000 will be startup money. That is correct, it's, and that's yes. that's coming from the general fund, and the money coming back oh, will be going to on. the park fund. Oh. So generally, general. So what? You're buzzing. I'm sorry. So what our thoughts were at staff level is that we would use TOT, uh, transient occupancy tax, because it is a tourist-related uh, event. Okay, as the seed money, and then with whatever we get back, we would pay back the TOT first, and everything else would go into parks, so that we don't have TOT becoming parks funds. So that that was our thought. So essentially, uh, my statement is, is accurate. Yeah. It's coming from the general fund, but when the funds come back, it's going to the parks fund. It would come from TOT, transient occupancy yeah. tax. I know what that is, yeah. but that and is then general fund money. <laughs> we, well, we've separated it out now. It's all community center, basically. All right. So it is a separate fund now, but it was. It was originally, yes, you're correct. So, but, but yeah, so... Um, in order to keep those from commingling, though, we would pay back the TOT back into the community center fund, and then everything else would become park funds. So yes. I'm looking for some of it to come back to this uh, general fund. Yeah, into the parks. Yeah, into the parks. Yeah. No, I mean into not the parks fund, but into general fund. It can be used for other things. Well, the the parks foundation, when they make donations, it is directly into parks. And that so, is the mission of the yeah. Parks Foundation, that yeah. is correct, yes. 
all the money that we raised comes back to the city and goes into the parks fund. I think they've been using some of it for the grant program, but they also use it to leverage uh, for grants. Um, you know how you, yeah, I know how you do that, but I know that a lot of the money has been going to the grants program, which if you've read lately, 10,000 has become 100,000. So it's been leveraged really well. So that's, that's the goal of the Parks Foundation is to, to raise that money and bring it back to the city. But we do need the $8,000 seed money to start and get everything going. Uh, but we do have a lot of donations and in-kind contributions. So hopefully this will go back like Chris said right away. Any other questions? Oh, Mayor Clark, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the kinds of expenditures we're looking at here, you talked about basically setup, site preparation, and so forth. Right. This is also with the partnership with Kaiser Rotary, uh, KRA, um, and the concerts? Yes, I mean, Clint is, we, we went to him and he, but it's not a startup for him. He is still having his regular concert on the Saturday night, and then he did get a couple more bands for Friday and Sunday, but he will have, he will hopefully raise all his funds through his uh, food cart because there will be so many people, more people there, but we will have other food there too so that it's not, you know, people aren't backed up like 50 deep. So um, it's, it, we're hoping for a big to-do and we're hoping we bring 1,000, 2,000 people down just to the park every day or if not more. We've got parking set up and everything, so. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, thank you very thank much. You. Good job, Rick. Next up, we have Daniel Bethel with the Kaiser Chamber. Okay, so I was asked to bring some stuff to talk about my... Oh. I was asked to bring some stuff to present. Do you want me to hand it out? I just figured you could take one down and pass it around kind of a thing, but you know. So I'm Danielle Bethel, I'm a Kaiser resident and I'm the director of the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce and I was here two weeks ago and I proudly said that I think the next day I had, had succeeded at my first full year and now I'm at first full year and a couple weeks into the job. This is my first time presenting in front of the budget committee, which I apologize, I didn't know I officially needed to show up and do so. I'm making it happen today. So I, the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce submits um, budget requests to the city for, for, to create a partnership. And there's a white piece of paper, and I believe this was all handed out previous, because I'd sent it to Tim, but I wanted to break it down and add some extra information to try to help along those of you that may not be familiar with the Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> um, in the years past, um, the city has generously um, entered into a relationship with the mission membership package um, for the city to engage our activities and our businesses and the functions of the chamber in Kaiser as a whole. And that's a value of $499. And I listed off the bullet points as to what that gets. Thank you. Um, and typically there's one or two people that represent a business, but in this situation, every city councilor, the mayor, and well, every staff person of the city is eligible to represent the city at all the functions of the chamber um, for networking and interaction with the public and our membership. Uh, so it's, a, I think, a great value to the city. Um, they've also traditionally um, had an ad in our lifestyle magazine, the Blue Magazine. This is this year's magazine, 2017, and the first couple of months of 2018. Um, I actually produced this. I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> it took us some time. And the city has an ad in here um, that looks really great, but I've actually already started working on the ad for next year because I want it to represent more of what Kaiser is, not just the Civic Center. And so I'm working with some staff here at the city on that, that piece. So that way when we're sending this out, right now we have 5,000 copies printed and we've already um, circulated 1,200 of them into the public and we've contacted many of our members and we'll get, be getting them out. But the primary use of this is to give to people who are relocating or coming to Kaiser um, who are visiting here so they can connect with chamber members and, and see kind of what we offer here in Kaiser. 
a couple of things that I added to the request this year. Um, after being with the chamber for a year, I realized we see a ton, ton of foot traffic and phone traffic um, and, and internet traffic from people that are trying to come into town or trying to locate something in town. Um, today I took a phone call from a gentleman who was trying to determine who owns the property of a building that just went out of business about a month ago. And that's not information that we track. Um, and so I work with Nate Brown on trying to, to connect those dots. Um, it takes staff time to do that, uh, to get that information out on our website, to make sure that our public knows what's happening in Kaiser if they're not getting what they need from other resources. They generally call us first. People come to the chamber to find out where um, a business is located, whether they're a member or not. We want to connect those individuals together so they're successful in our town. Um, our website right now is not, it's not efficient. It's, um, it's very outdated and it has a lot of challenges. And I've entered into a relationship with a local web developer who um, is going to give us a really great deal to upgrade that so we can really serve the population that we want to be serving, which is a greater whole of Kaiser, but then expand that outwardly. Um, because I think we're going to keep growing. To date, um, since I've been at the chamber, we've increased our membership now by 79 members, which is huge for the chamber. Um, every day we have somebody calling, I'm not exaggerating, every day we take a call from someone trying to figure out what it is that we're doing, what's new, how can they engage. Um, I, I'm very proud of that, but I want to be able to have a tool that can help them help themselves. And <laughs> it scared me. Uh, so, you know, I want to, anyway, I'm at, that's why I'm asking for that $2,500, because it will also help me bring in some additional staff to serve that public better. Um, I'd like to be out in the community more, working with our members and helping them be successful. Um, I'm mentoring some businesses right now with sustainability plans so they can be more successful in Kaiser and be here long term. Um, that is a benefit of being in the chamber, but that requires me to get outside the office. So I need to expand our base inside to do that. And then I've also asked for five um, uses here at the Civic Center. And four of them surround community conversations. This is something the chamber started in the past. Um, actually, the community dinners that we host right now on the fourth Wednesday every month came out of community conversations that we had in the past through a partnership with the city. And I don't know all the details to that, but I know we hosted them here. Um, and we, we, we need to keep going. Do I do something? <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, come on. <laughs> you're, you're just making fun of me right now. Um, so the chamber's job in the community is to deal with economic development. That's one of the things that we're charged with. And we're establishing a partnership with the city right now. We've had a few meetings with staff. I've met with some city councilors. And I've met with many, many businesses, not just chamber members, to talk about what does Kaiser need and how are we going to get there. Um, but we need to have a real in-depth conversation with our community about what that means to Kaiser and bring a lot of people to the table. And that's going to take a couple of conversations. And unfortunately, my small space isn't going to offer that. And so two of these four uses, I want to push towards that economic development conversation. And then um, an additional two, I want to talk to our community about some of the challenges we have here in our education system with our elementary schools, the middle schools, and our high school. Um, I hear from the schools because I'm very invested in youth in Kaiser regularly with their need to enhance a project or get funding for a project. They're looking for a business partner. Um, and I think that working as a team and having everybody on the same page, we can better serve our students, help our teachers be teachers rather than development coordinators for their classrooms. Um, and I need a space to do that. So, Mr. Chair? Thank you very much. Um, thank you for this very detailed um, and very easy to follow presentation. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, the ask is very clear and uh, I, that's very helpful to me. May I recommend, and this is up to uh, the uh, committee, that the discussion on the in-kind use of the Civic Center be uh, deferred to uh, conversation with the council and with a then a staff report from the city manager to be taken up separately because uh, that's not necessarily a budgetary item that is something that uh, is usually determined um, by the council on a case-by-case -case basis so with the um, permission of the chair and the budget committee that would be uh, my suggestion 
Okay. Because it's, it's a great conversation to have, but it, it's it's not going to impact the bottom line of the um, of our funds at this point. The the other app part of the ask is a monetary one, and I think it's a great conversation to have. Would that be um, amenable to everybody? So are you um, are you talking about the twenty three thirty on our um, budget request list? I'm talking about the the in kind portion of the conversation. That that would be something that would uh, come to council, and then staff would. Uh, bring a, uh, a staff report regarding oh. that um, that kind of donation. Okay. Is it's on the I think it's on the updated list that we. It's on okay. the updated list, Kathy. Is it? Nice. Uh, I should have been uh, this one. Or there. Here. That's fine. Okay. So I see the direct financial, indirect, and was the right police above, and public works, okay. Right above the solar eclipse. Uh, yeah, that's At the bottom, okay. Yeah. So I would uh, like to recommend that that go to, um, because that's how those are typically handled. Okay. Um, if that would be okay, but I really would like to have a conversation about the, um, the in-kind and the website update and so forth and the support services. Um, okay. But that's up to the, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if, uh, so with concurrence. Would we still be dealing with the uh, 1936? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Council Anderson. No. Oh. Oh, but, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McGee. Oh, Mr. McGee. Dr. Okay. McGee was asking. Are we good? Pardon me? Are we? Uh, no, my only question is do we still deal then with the 1396? Yeah. At this time? Yeah. yeah. We'll uh, still deal with that tonight and then ask council to deal with the 2330. If that's okay. Yeah, it's fine with me. Absolutely. I, I just wanted to work. accommodate some of the asks I received today, so I wanted to be very transparent with what I'm after here. <laughs> All good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Anderson. Just a quick comment, Danielle. Thank you so much for, uh, I second what uh, Mayor Clark said. Uh, this really helped uh, really clarify a lot of things. Um, just kind of seeing what all, what all the chamber does, but also going with your request too. This is very detailed and uh, appreciate the uh, information. Really appreciated you coming here tonight. I know he had to move a few things around, but uh, um, that was really helpful for me, I know, to know, understand better what that separate item under Civic Center or, or request under for the Civic Center was. Because okay. I wasn't quite sure what, I just That's thought that we're, we're just meetings still. You know, well, uh, I like to was... throw parties, so I'm not gonna lie, I'd be happy to do that too. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Ron? So just to be clear, we're just talking about the Civic Center rental for the five events. We're not talking about the in-kind for police overtime. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we've, 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 yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's the one just above the eclipse on that new sheet. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Well, that's that's the proposal from the mayor. Is that it's about it right, the city council about, yeah. to take care of the suggestion. But, but we're right. just right. we're just talking about this five events here, not because originally you talked about the in kind contributions, which part of that is police overtime. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. The only one that I would uh, recommend or suggest to the group that be deferred to council and staff report would be the um, in kind use of the civic center because the other two are already worked into the budget. They're already listed in the budget okay. because they've been done in the past. Okay. Anything else? The only thing that hasn't been done in the past that I have asked for in the in-kind is um, police overtime for the holiday lights parade that we took on oh, in 2016. Okay. And I have included that because Thank we you. will be continuing that on going forward. And that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's already in the budget, right? Mm -hmm. at the moment that, that is included in the budget at the moment um, just from the perspective of we didn't know if the event was going to continue to happen it was out of our control so we did not factor in any revenue associated with it okay all right all right thank you very much you're welcome thanks for having me can i leave because i gotta pick up my kid <laughs> you're good <laughs> thank you there's nothing going on all right no. uh, that concludes the list i have is there anybody else wishing to testify tonight no, please. Please introduce yourself for the record and thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. I am Carrie Emery. I am the coordinator for the Kaiser Youth Peer Court. 
We started the program in 2004, and since then, we've had 1,327 cases come through the program. We've closed 1,057 of those successfully, keeping our 80% goal of success, 80% or higher, excuse me, of success rate. Um, the number of referrals that come in, the highest um, number is comes from theft, alcohol, marijuana, curfew, and truancy. And truancy has a total of 448 that we've had come through this program. Um, there are 476 volunteers. They have completed 7,042 hours of community service in the Peer Court program since we started. Kaiser United, which is our local nonprofit, and I believe they were here on Tuesday, they um, helped support the program and start it in 2014. They helped Kaiser Peer Court get a grant from the um, Oregon Youth Development Council on behalf funded through the Office of Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention. I wanted to make sure I got that right. <laughs> and with that grant, I was able to attend a conference that I haven't been to in eight years, which is the National Youth Court Association. They are also doing it again next year. I have been told the grant is a possibility of continuing to the next fiscal year. Currently, with that grant, we, were able, we are able to take some kids to what, um, the YWAM, which is a youth with a mission which has the Salem Ropes course. We have 21 kids signed up. We're taking three adults with us, and it'll be a four-hour event. We got donations for transportation. It's covered all the way through the grants, so no, the kids have to pay for anything. It's all covered and everything. We're also able to update some of the, infra the stuff that we have with Peer Court, like the computer and the printer, and get extra supplies and education materials that we use through the program. So I just want to ask for continued um, requests for funding through the program. And currently it was 10,750, is that right? Yes. And then um, that was only an increase of 250, which we haven't increased in a while. Um, we keep it at the minimum, because I'd like to keep the program going as much as we can. Is there any questions? Any questions? Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, over the years, I've really been pleased to hear uh, the work that's been done through Peer Court that keeps kids that have made a mistake, um, gets them, keeps them back on the path towards success. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that looks like in terms of the students that complete Peer Court, complete their consequences? Have you been able to track what happens to them after that? You know, where do they? tend to stay out of trouble after that and um, stay on track toward graduation? Well, the data would need to come from the juvenile department, but what they have told me, what we do is we track them for a six-month period after a successful case closure, and as long as they've stayed out of trouble and haven't reoffended within that six months, they're able to expunge their record. So once they expunge, that data is gone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the number of how many kids that we expunged. I could find that out for you. It is on the computer that we use with the peer court. Um, the juvenile department would have to get that other information. Well, I'm more curious in terms of you know keeping students on sec on successful paths toward graduation, where something like this could easily derail them, and if they are able to stay on track, you know, work through their consequences, have a learning opportunity to grow personally, um, keeps them, you know, on that trajectory toward a, a diploma. I've had some kids that started in 2004 with the peer court, and currently one of them in particular has two degrees, one of them in the juvenile justice program, and she is currently working with youth. I have had another one that got in touch with me telling me that she's gone into the program, and a lot of the kids come in here because they are interested in the law and the justice system. Some of them come in because this is their activity, this is what they do. Um, others come because I feed them. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, no matter what reason they're there, they're still getting education and learning something. They also are always told that what they do affects other people, and they're, oh, it's always brought to their attention who it affects. It's not just the individual that maybe be sitting next to them, but it's everybody, especially with theft. It could be the people at the store. It could be the store itself. It's also always the parents. So we always try to teach them that in the peer court program. Well, it's an outstanding program. I know that... Uh, over the years, we've seen tremendous results, and your dedication to that has uh, been fantastic for our youth. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Dr. McGee? 
I think this is probably a question for staff that I have. Uh, what they're asking for here tonight is to restore to what the, re the level of funding uh, last year. Uh, my question is, uh, last year was 10750 and we were budgeting 10005 Why did we cut them down to $250,000? Uh, the, the previous year, they actually requested 10500 so that they're asking for an increase for us. So if you look at the first column on the, on the budget request worksheet. Okay. And then the second column is what they've requested for 1718. Right, I got you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So did I understand you, you, you work closely with um, Kaiser United? Yes. And they, they have a budget request, as you may know, for $2,000. Do you know, I mean, do you know, was that something that would get to you? Or do you know how, I mean, maybe I'm asking the wrong person. I apologize. But no. do you know how that interplay would work? Yeah, we discussed that actually at our last board meeting. And we want to be have the funds available in case somebody comes to us that is requesting stuff. In addition to the fact that we are sponsoring or helping support, um, it hasn't been financial yet, but the um, community gardens in addition to the peer courts. So those two things that we know that the funding would go towards. Um, the community gardens, they came to us as a request. Um, we helped them in support of trying to find you know, discounts and everything so they could get that fence built. Um, they haven't been back to request funds from us at this point, but we wanted to be available for the community, whether it's the um, community gardens or anything else, that we have those funds available. Kaiser United has supported over the years, like um, they were doing, I think it was the 50 or the 100 years for the kids at one of the schools. We donated that so they could get t-shirts for the kids. Um, they tried to reach out to the public to do t-shirts. They couldn't get enough funding for it. So they took the funding that Kaiser United donated to them and got those kids those bracelets that they wear. And so that was the contribution we did for that. We've helped support the music program at McNary, mentoring programs, uh, parenting classes. We used to do the dental van in Kaiser, which we haven't done recently. They have not been back to see us. We'd really like to see that get up and started again. So there are a lot of variety of things that we'd like to do no, with that. It doesn't go to the peer court. Uh, that. Some of it does, okay. yes. Or if all of it. At this point, we don't know. It has to be voted on. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any, yeah. Councilor Parsons? So that brings up a question. So Kaiser United, then they don't have their own board or they're part of Kaiser your United board? has a board, yes. And that you guys also are on or... I, I guess have been, I'm just I have been with confused. Kaiser United since 2004 when they helped start the program. Okay. I'm currently the treasurer there. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. All right. Chief? Yeah, I have a comment to make. Uh, I'm the state lead of the Juvenile Justice Committee for the Youth Development Council. Um, we, set the, we set the priorities for the federal funds that come to Oregon through the OJJDP. Uh, and this last year, we set as one of those priorities uh, peer courts. And the reason is because they're, they're efficacious and they work. Uh, by the way, I had nothing to do with the grant funding, so I was out of the loop on that. So she earned the grant funding. Thank goodness I'm not in that mix. Um, but I, I want to just uh, caution you that, uh, and that funding is secure for the next two years. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but the third year from now, she's going to lose a lot of funding. And uh, so we need to be looking forward to how we backfill that. I'm not sure that'll continue to be a priority with those, with those funds, if, if, if those funds will even still be available. But I do want to tell you, these kids that come through peer court, uh, they're important Kaiser kids. And I tell you why they're important is because they're, they've committed crimes, or at least crimes for which a juvenile can be held accountable, and it's their first offense. And they're right there at that crossroads where we help them go one direction or the other. And it's money well spent. We need to make sure we pay attention to it. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, oh I'm sorry, JD. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed it, Chief, but what was that amount that will be expiring? Uh, you know, I don't know what her grant funded amount was. 20000 20000 Okay. Not pocket change. Then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to testify? All right. Moving back into the budget presentations, we left off on Tuesday with the uh, with the in the public works funds with the water on page 134. Uh, thank you, Chair. I uh, want to start off and, and bring some stuff back to you. 
at our last couple of meetings, there's been some conversation about our rate structure and the equity between the commercial and the residential um, folks. So I wanted to bring some information back. I've been doing some quick analysis the last couple of days. And really what we're looking at, um, well, I guess to, to explain, our rate structure has two components. There's a meter size and then there's a consumption charge. Um, the meter size doesn't depend on whether it's residential, multifamily, or commercial. It depends on the size of the meter. So a residential could have a huge meter if they really wanted to, and they would be charged the same price as a commercial who wanted a really large meter. <coughs> so that, that really, um, that makes up about 40% of the revenue that the general fund receives, or the, the water fund receives. Um, the consumption charge makes up 60% of the revenue. And of that 60%, um, the commercial accounts make up about 10%. Um, so when you start looking at, at the total impact that a commercial account has on the city's water fund, it's very minimal. Um, if we were to try to do a um, level the playing field this year, the analysis came back that really we would be moving about 10 to 11,000 from the residential multifamily accounts to the commercial accounts. Uh, when you start doing the math on that, um, residential cost savings would be about 50, 51 cents per year um, for a re regular residential house. If we were looking at multifamily, it might be about 23, well, I, excuse me, about seven, seven to eight dollars an account per year. Um, so overall, the, the impact of a commercial consumption charge is very, very small. Um, if we were to impact the commercial customers, um, on average it would be about $23 increase in their water bill for the year. Um, and the biggest impact would go with the Salem-Kaiser School District by far, um, since they're included in, in the commercial accounts. Um, so at this point, we recognize we hear you, the water rate model was done in 2002, 2002-ish. Uh, 2002 that's, that's, Bill and I have been going back and forth with each other. It's been 2002 and it roughly cost us about $43,000 back then. I'm not an expert. I don't know if the price has gone up or down with the rate model. Um, but I think probably, is it something we should do? Absolutely. Um, are we going to be able to do it in 17, 18? Maybe, but probably not. Um, so probably some, some point in the future after that, we'll be looking at updating that model. Um, and at that point, we'll have to have some serious policy type of questions. Um, how much do we want to, to wh who gets the subsidi subsidization, if any? Um, the real question is who is, who is causing the peak demand? And unfortunately in Kaiser, the peak demand is really driven by residential. Um, so d if anything, the residential would probably, again, end up paying more than commercial if you're basing it just off of, of peak demand. Um, so I think it's an important thing, and I think it's a great thing that we brought up, um, but unfortunately the incremental dollars is only about 10, 10 to 11,000 for this year. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bill Lawyer to talk through the rest of the water fund budget. Ron? <clears throat> so in this budget, it looks like you're looking for 113,000 increase in water rates. That is correct. So in those water rates, the, the residents are paying how much of that in the, in the multifamily slash commercial? Well, the, the commercial would be paying about 10% of that, so maybe 13,000. And so the citizens are paying 100,000 in this? That would be correct. What's the percentage of the water use between, well, the, between the, those two? The citizens use 90% of the water. Yeah, so, that, so that's not a function of the rate. That's a function of the number of commercial businesses versus the number of residential right. units in, in the city. So we have a fairly small commercial water usage versus residential water usage. So even if you level, I mean, the analysis basically is if you level the rate between the two, it saves the average home 51 cents per year if you accumulate it across all of their bills throughout the year. So it's not a huge margin. The, the, the citizens, the, the, the residents are not shouldering a great burden by the reduced commercial rate. About 51 cents a year per residential unit accumulated across all their bills. Yeah, I, I took your, your thoughts, Ron, and 
I thought, okay, so we do need 113,000. If we just adjusted the rates, you know, accordingly and made them level, how would we get there? Um, the commercial accounts, the proposed rate was $1.34 for the, the consumption charge. That would go up to 138 and a half cents. And the, the residential customers would go from, uh, from $1.39 down to $1.38 and a half cents. So you're seeing a half a, half a cent savings when we adjust the rates. Um, the, really, the, the issue is the consumption charges are really only five cents apart. Um, so that really doesn't add up for a lot of the, a, a big change if we were to do anything at this point. Well, and I, like I say, I don't want to disagree with your math, but um, down below underneath residential, when you take 1,300 CCF, whatever measurement that is, into the current rate, uh, currently the residential folks are paying 2.133 cents, and it goes out further than that, but, um, and they'll go to 2.219 cents per unit. Ron, what, what, can you I'm sorry, this is in the long range planning. Um, yeah, I think that probably does. Document, which, which is an increase of 0.86 cents per unit, whereas the businesses and multifamily folks um, will be going from uh, basically 1.459 to 1.518 at a 0.59. So there's, there's a 0.27 of a cent difference between those rates. I think your analysis might be including the fixed, the meter size charges well, as well. I think all, me as a citizen, all I care about is, is the bill at the end. Sure. And that was what you folks did the math for us nicely, saying you have this, this, and this is what the bill is going to end up. So I skipped all the stuff up above and just went to how much do I have to pay in my water bill. And the increase is a 31% increase higher for residents than it is for uh, commercial use. Now, what you're saying is, is that the commercial don't use very much of the water, um, but with the increase in commercial around here, I mean, I don't know what you, you count all commercial. I don't know if McNary's probably on a well or something out there. They're, are they with us? Big meter. Yeah. They meter with us. McNary's so by they far gotta the largest. So they've got to be a big water user um, doing the course just with the arguments all on Creekside on how much water they were using. And, uh, you know, Salem Kaiser's probably a big one too. The, the golf course is irrigated with a well it's not on the golf course it's not irrigated with city water okay that's that's what i thought yeah, i thought yeah. they had a well yeah. but they disagreed but anyway um so that's that's what i was looking at is i was looking at I that right now um we would be paying basically 0.7 cents per unit that we use and i could say that ccf what's that stand for i'm sorry cubic cubic, cubic feet i'm sorry cubic feet so we, we so bill we bill on so a for every cubic every cubic feet, feet Residents are going to pay 0.7 cents more than businesses. And next year when we go up another 4%, it'll be just a tiny bit more, but it'll still, again, be a little bit more per business. But, uh, you know, so that, that model of just increasing at 4% every year, if you need 113000 at least what we'd like to do is, is even that out. Uh, businesses pay the same amount of the increase as we as as residents pay and I know the savings may be minute but we we've been talking about this for years we've had lots of rate increases and each time we talk about it, it's a small rate increase but uh, I can tell you as a person that pays that bill every month it, it, it starts to get significant um, and I I don't water a lot <laughs> so <laughs> well we definitely just, appreciate uh, and we definitely now, appreciate so. you bringing up these thoughts um, like I say, it is a, a council decision on changing the, the I rate model. It. Thank so, you. yeah, Dr. McGee. Did I, uh, I? I may have missed it, but did I understand that uh, McNary is a big user? We uh, don't charge McNary, do we? McNary High School. The high school. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. When did that happen? We traded him for a well site, and I thought that was in in perpetuity. That. That expired, that lease or whatever agreement is there expired a number of years ago. And so okay, when so that expired, they, for they the pay water. for the water, correct. Now how about the well? Do they rent the well to us or what? Or do we use, still use the well? We still use the well, yeah. We still use the well, maintain the property, just like we always have. Um, but they, the, the agreement expired and there's been no movement to renew that agreement. And that's been 
I'm going to guess almost 10 years now. It's been quite a while. What about the other school sites, just as a point of interest? They pay. All right. Because they didn't at one time either. Yeah. I'm thinking particularly of Cummings, where we wanted them to irrigate uh, that big field, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't unless because of the water arrangement. Right. But, okay. Thank you. Anything else on the water? Well, before oh, we yeah, we, didn't, we haven't even got through that part, have we? All <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. Look at me go. We getting can carry of, on. That's we're hard. We're getting out of here by 15. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, water fund does, as you all know already, it includes a 4% water rate increase. Um, other than that, it's pretty much to carry the, con continue the themes, uh, status quo budget. There's really no changes. Um, within the water fund, it does contain 70% of that additional employee I talked about Tuesday night. Um, the only really other change within there is there's part of a vehicle, of the 65% of a replacement pickup to replace a 1996 model. Um, and the other item is the water fund share of the future equipment purchase, the reserve for a future equipment purchase. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same as, as last year. So. Councilor Anderson. Thank you. Um, sorry, Tim, looking through, or uh, Bill, sorry, looking through this. It's long good. day, excuse yeah. me. Go um, over to realizing that these funds are obviously going to be restricted to just what, you know, these can be, sp or funds just that can be spent in this area, but just right. kind of what popped into my mind here was, and I've seen this, I think, maybe in some other areas, so I don't know if it's appropriate to ask you the question or, or Tim, but, um, under um, page 135, under line 30, under wellness, the just kind of one thing that kind of stood out to me was the amount that we're not that wellness is bad. That's a good thing. I think that's awesome. But um, it's like you, you're projected to ha have two thousand dollars there in expenses, and we're we're proposing forty two hundred. Mm -hmm. So you know, double, more than double. Um, is that hopeful that that's going to happen or are we yeah, just thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to hit that or? Since, since it's a program that's available to all mm -hmm. uh, to employees, we budget the maximum and then the expense then comes out to whoever decides to actually participate. Okay. So very likely it will be much less than that. But if, for whatever reason, all of the water employees decide to enter into that program, we want to be able to fund that. Okay. So that's why we do that. Oh, okay. I, I would also add that as you look through across time, the adoption rate is getting higher with the employees. So the first year about 1,300, second year 1,500, and now we're looking at close to 2,000. So more and more employees are getting involved in the wellness program. Okay, thanks. I just, it just, it just kind of pot, didn't occur to me to ask that the other day, but um, that's helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, Line 44, the, f the footnotes talk about administrative service charges increased primarily due to personnel services increases associated with salary and wage, retirement, insurance. Can you tell me what that, that, that is, the, this so, administrative service charge? So, so those are the charges that get allocated. That's the city manager, city attorney, city recorder's time, the finance group. Um, the utility billing group as well is, is run through that line item. Um, so you can see the, the breakdown of those charges at the bottom of the page on page 136. So this facility also maintenance. Facilities, maintenance, <coughs> um, all of the general overhead type of, of charges. Okay, so um, coming back to my theme before, the city manager, you're only 21.9 in a fund that's $3,800,000? So once again, it's blended not only by the, the kind of work that, that our legal department does is similar to what I do, but also based on FTE. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a way to track how I can project I'm likely to spend my time is I'm going to spend more time working with the largest group of people. So that's, so it, it's an estimate. Follow up. But Who's the largest group of people? The coppers. Mm -hmm. So By far. You work with the police, the chief. I am, account I am accountable 
for them. Yes. Do you not believe that I am accountable for the police department? No, sir. That's that's not what I, what I mean. I, I I would figure that the, the police chief would take care of his officers, and you, of course, would deal with the chief himself and not all the officers, unless, of course, like I say, there was some personnel thing or something that Well, that's, that you that's need. true about every department, um, but my accountability is to all of the different departments within the city. So the largest groups of employees have a larger amount of accountability. It's just a way of allocating time, so of guesstimating where I'm going to spend my accountability. So. Any other questions on the water fund? Not, take a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the water fund as presented. A uh, second. Been moved and seconded that we improve the water fund as, uh, as presented with the caveat that we can change it at the end. Any discussion? All those, okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. And now we are on to the water facility replacement fund. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The water facility replacement fund is what, what I call our project fund. That's the fund we use to build things. The revenue for that fund comes from a, a combination of systems development fees paid for new connections to the water system. Those fees are assessed based on meter size. Um, so it doesn't matter what type of business, home, doesn't matter. It's based on the meter size. Um, the other, the other, and the majority of the funds for this project fund are transfers directly from the water fund. Um, as you can see, there's four hundred thousand dollars scheduled to be to be transferred from the water fund into the facility fund um, for projects this year. Um, as you'll see, project costs have gone are going down into overtime, not going up. That's because we're completing the capital improvements recommended in our master plan. Um, we have pretty much done everything to date that's called for in the master plan on schedule um, for now um, on schedule. And so we're just the next few years, and I can't remember how many it, it outlines, is just water main replacements. As we move farther into the future, about 2023, I think it is, the master plan calls for an additional reservoir um, to be constructed for water storage. Um, when we get to that point, we are close to that point, we'll evaluate the timing and the needs of that facility um, and how we're going to pay for it. Because the current rate structure probably won't take care of that. But we'll, we'll worry about that as we move forward and, and establish the actual timeline for when that needs to be constructed. Um, that's pretty much it on this fund. Questions on the water facility replacement fund? Bill, in Gubser, we've got a problem with some of our water being pretty brackish. Okay. Are we expecting anything to be to help us out with the supply side of that so that it's not so dark? Um, I mean, it's, it's a pretty bad collection that we're finding we've got to keep clean. Is it certain times a year? Yeah, I know we've had some problems in the past with our well up there at 17th Avenue. Um, to my knowledge, those have diminished or gone away. I know the guys are just finishing up their annual flushing project, which you know cleans all the mains out, strips out all the all the minerals that settle in the bottoms of the pipes. Um, I'll check with them tomorrow and see what they're seeing in the, up in that area, what they've seen in that area of flushing. From what I've heard, it's much much better than it was. So I can sure follow up and let you know. So at this point in time, though, we don't have any additional, ex you know, you don't expect to see any additional improvements for any of the wells at this point in time or filtration. It's pretty much, it's going to stay as it is? Nothing that we've identified a need at this point, no. Thank you. you Dr. McGee? Uh, Bill, let's talk about the Lauterbach pro property. Okay. Is that well permanently abandoned? It will be, yes. All right. What is the size of that area, that lot? Is it a city lot? It's not a city lot. It's not a, big enough for a city lot, no. Does it have any economic value to sell? I've thought about that, Jerry, and, and it probably does. But in my opinion, it doesn't outweigh the storage space needs that the water department has and the public works department has. The building we use for storage. And I would propose that we maintain that property and keep that building so we can keep it for storage because we're crammed for space. We really are crammed for space. In fact, I'd like to see us buy some more property 
somewhere and ad build an addition to our facility. The problem with that is finding a piece of property. And maybe you could trade because that's not an ideal place to store your equipment, I wouldn't think. It's not, and, and, and it is a challenge, but it's what we have. It's hard to get into, and really the value of that property is only to the neighbors. It's not big enough. We would have to split it up or sell it to one of the bordering property owners, um, which, you know, reduces its, its value because it's not big enough for an individual lot by itself. I've thought about it, though. I've thought long and hard about it because it is a difficult site to get into, um, which is part of the reason abandoning that wall is going to cost so much. But um, we really feel right now, until we can find another site, and I've made some inquiries from some different folks and some different properties that I see around that are in that are zoned properly, and nobody's interested in selling anything. So until I can find something, I want to hold on to that piece. All right. Eventually, maybe somebody will want it. Yeah, eventually, you're right. So, any other questions? Any other questions on the water facility replacement fund? Yeah, Quick one, I'm sorry. So, Bill, we're we're bringing four hundred thousand dollars in from the water fund, mm -hmm. um, but still, at the end of the day, we're going to have two hundred thirty-one thousand four hundred in reserve, which is um, an increase of what's projected anyway for this this year. And we also have another one of those little unanticipated expenses of forty thousand dollars kind of sitting there. So why why keep two thirty one in this fund? Um, and I mean why not pull less from the water fund for a loan from the water fund uh, and have go back to say one hundred sixty seven thousand uh, for an ending balance? Because we have debt. That's that's reserved for debt requirements. There's debt in the water fund. If you look at line 27, restricted for debt service requirements, that's at 231. And that debt actually gets paid off in 2020, Tim? Is that right? Uh, September 20. So once we pay that debt off, the transfer could be much less into the, into the facility fund because we don't have, we'll have that. We won't have that reserve there. I've asked about that before because I wanted to use it. And Tim told me no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like wearing orange. <laughs> <laughs> Any well, other questions on this fund? <laughs> All right, take a motion. Mr. Chair, I move approval of uh, the water facility replacement fund. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the water facility replacement fund as presented with the caveat that we can change it later. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Now we're on to the parks improvement fund. Page 139. Okay, the park improvement fund, those revenues are come from park systems development fees, and those fees are assessed only on residential development, be it single family, multifamily, it doesn't matter. It's, it's strictly residential development. Commercial properties, businesses do not pay that fee. Um, there is a change. A sheet, Tim handed out an uh, updated sheet tonight um, to line 20 in this fund. Um, the unanticipated expenses section, um, which we have decided we need to just delete the ADA access to the amphitheater um, description and just leave it unanticipated expenses. Um, that's been increased from 10,000 to 525,000. Um, the reason for that is, one, first of all, we have a pretty major project under, or going under construction this year at Kaiser Rapids Park that's, that's funded through grants and some, and some of these feet, some of these funds. Um, if for some reason the bids come in higher than the estimates, the actual bids, we're going to have need to have some access to this fund to finish building the project. We need to finish. We need to finish that. So um, Tim and I talked about this actually this afternoon, the way it was set up those funds were in the restricted for improvements line item and if they're in there we can't get to them in any given in that fiscal cycle and so i propose that we put it in the unanticipated line have it allocated and available if needed um, so that we can finish the project and for those of you that don't know the project at kaiser rapids park is um, a port in place rubberized servicing for the big toy pathways from shamala road south to the existing paved pathway in the open field at Kaiser Rapids Park, connections over to the neighborhood on Tate, Tate Avenue and a connection from the new path over to the Big Toy. 
and the other project is permanent restrooms. So we, we applied for and received a grant through Oregon, Oregon Parks and Recreation um, of $430,000. Um, I believe we're going to be close to that with our estimates, but based on a bid that we got a week ago for a sidewalk project, I'm a little nervous that the estimates were going to be low. That project came in about sixty thousand dollars higher than we anticipated so which and is a pretty big never happens it almost never happens that's a pretty big number pretty big increase on what we thought was going to be a hundred maybe a hundred and twenty thousand dollar project it came in at 186 so um that's the reason for the change here and from there i'd happy to be happy to answer any questions the other thing i want to mention with this fund um we're challenged to use this fund because um we have to match with additional funding and the, it doesn't matter where the funds come from but we're restricted on how much of these funds on a percentage basis we can spend for any any improvement in that, that that's identified in the parks master plan in any, any particular park can only be funded at about 13.6 percent of the total cost of the project so as you can tell 86.4 percent funds coming from somewhere else is hard to do from our parks fund being challenged as it is from general fund support so um, it's really good that we can take advantage of the grant opportunity through Oregon Parks, take advantage of using some of these funds to do the improvements in the parks that these funds were collected to do. So. Are there other bids out there for the sidewalk project? Or? Oh, that's the low bid. That's the low bid. That's low bid. Mm. All right. Yeah. Oh, and uh, interestingly enough on that, I'll just, uh, just on that topic, the bids were all pretty close together. I mean, sometimes we see big range. I think the high bid on this on that project was 203 and so they weren't way far apart which is bothersome moving forward if we're going to start seeing numbers like that yes sir uh just a question on the the sidewalk bid mm -hmm. was that concrete or have we looked into asphalt to save money or? it's concrete okay. yeah mm -hmm. councilor anderson okay bill so let's can you talk a little bit what what what's the in, or help me out here what's the why is it that we can only spend 13 percent on that and i probably know i know the answer to the question in all likelihood but but you know because i was going to ask if you could elaborate on sure. the whole issue perhaps <coughs> on stcs and i i can restriction on those i know this topic very well i've been involved with it for many many years systems development fees have regulations in state law okay um and parks stcs are I won't say stri more strictly regulated, but they appear to be. And so you have to create um, a methodology on how you can use the SDCs you collect, okay? And we paid a consultant to, to, to determine this methodology that meets state law. Um, there's two kinds of fees. There's an improvement fee and a reimbursement fee. In Kaiser, we only have an improvement fee, okay, for the parks. Um, and for the water for that matter too, I believe is mostly improvement fee. Um, so you can, and that's all based on growth, okay? And so when the consultants looks at the park system as a whole and they determine that the growth in the area is X percent, that kind of drives the percentage of SDCs that can be used for a given mm -hmm. project. Before the law change, and that change happened in about I want to say about 2008, 2009, yeah, like right in now. there. Um, prior to that, each park was looked at individually and the growth around an individual park within a half mile radius was used. And so the percentages changed park by park by park for, at that time, neighborhood parks, okay? Regional and community parks were open 100% for systems development fees. You could, you could build a project in any regional or community, or community park with 100% SDCs. The law changed. Um, the, let me back up. The neighborhood parks at that time varied anywhere from 50% to 80% eligible cost, okay? When the law changed and we had to update our methodology, um, it went from those numbers I just quoted to pretty much 13.6 across the board. So the way that plays out, since you have to get, you have to match or you have to match those funds with other funds and typically parks are located in your general fund general fund for us is a constricted fund um, it becomes very difficult for us to allocate enough funding in the general fund to actually utilize 
very many of those SDCs at all. So when we get a large grant like this where we can dump some SDCs into it, we want to because we actually get to use those SDCs which we're collecting for exactly this purpose and we very rarely have the opportunity in any given year out of our general fund to match at that level. So this is, this is good news. I mean, this is great that we actually get to spend these funds. So, but yeah, the big deal is the law changed and made it incredibly difficult. And quite honestly, this may ultimately have to be a legislative issue where we go back to the legislature and try to fix this because we're collecting funds that are incredibly difficult to actually spend. And, and, and we need to spend them. I mean, they're important. The, the building out the master plan for the community, for parks, is an important part of our community. And the law has made it very difficult to actually spend funding to do that. So, And this applies to every, every city in the state that collects these fees. They may not be as challenged as we are from the general fund standpoint, but the, but the theory and the logic and the, and the criteria behind it is the same across the, across the state. Mayor Clark. Thank you. So the change that you're asking for is on line 20 to take off the reference to the ADA access to the amphitheater and just call it um, unanticipated expenses? Correct. But the number, um, the dollar amount does not change. Is that correct? No, the dollar, well, yeah, the dollar amount on the sheet you were handed tonight, $525,000 is what, what staff's recommending. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this would be as, a, as amended or... That's well, I, at this point, I would say it's as proposed. As proposed, okay. okay. I believe that's correct. That is correct, as proposed. Okay, JD. thank you. The restrictions on park funding that we were just talking about, is that also so that we don't overbuild parks that we can no longer maintain through general fund, general fund sources in light of potential uh, slide in development no so that's not why that's not why the law changed no why did the law change that I think, is it long I, I think what happened is the statute I think the development community the came out and said I'm tired of paying all these SDCs and I'm not seeing any action for it I want you state to do something about it in hopes and this is my theory I don't know this for fact in hopes that the state would reduce or do away with SDCs and what they did, in fact, was make it more mm -hmm. difficult to use them, but didn't do away with them. I can uh, ask, yes, actually help answer that question. Oh, yay. Uh, um, for real life. Yeah, because for, for at a staff level, the change makes no sense whatsoever. It so restricts the use of those funds that it, it becomes impossible to utilize them. But the reasoning behind it was not to limit the building of parks so that you have so you don't overburden your maintenance line items. That was not the that was not the rationale. Okay. The initial law when it was passed um, restricted back in the 90s, I believe it was, was um, so that there was some way to contain uh, and call them system development charges. Other states call them impact fees. We call them system development charges so that there's some correlation to that. But frankly, it was to restrict the amount um, that you could charge and what they would go for. So in the case of parks especially, um, they, the development community uh, wanted to contain those and restrict those costs and tie them in. Why the law change in um, 07, 09, I, that I couldn't tell you why, why that occurred. The only, yeah, I, I don't want to speculate, but there, there, there can be an <coughs> argument made that it was a very tactical decision on behalf of the development community in that if they can prove that you're not spending the SDCs that you're collecting for a long period of time, it can cause you to refund them back. And so perhaps restricting them so severely was an attempt at that. And I don't know. I and mean, that's just the first thing that runs through my mind, though. Okay. Are you good? All right. Dr. McGee. No. The uh, <laughs> amount that we're accumulating in the meantime we have it in the state interest bank, I suppose. Can we use the interest from that? Tim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we cannot. Once we, we have to allocate, we have in, a, in a rational manner, interest to these type of funds because they, they do generate interest. So the interest goes back into the fund? 
The interest does go back into the fund. fund. Correct. Any other questions on the Park Improvement Fund? All right. Make a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the Park Improvements Fund as presented. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the Park Improvements Fund as, uh, as presented. Uh, with the caveat, we can change it later. Uh, any discussion? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, we are now moving into the general services funds, and we'll start with the non-departmental resources on page 142, unless you want to do a general fund summary before we start. Well, I, di I did hand out a couple of things. Um, this is just a reminder. We've already taken a look at it tonight, but the bu budget request form. Um, the general fund or the general services fund will be the one that takes the majority of these, except for the, the two at the bottom, or I guess now the one at the bottom which would impact the community center fund. Um, so just for your information, assuming we don't have any major changes or requests other than what's on the sheet, um, I would just advise that just make it a policy decision of whether you want to fund it or not. Um, if you do want to fund it, um, we can find the funds f for all of these through either contingency or reducing our ending funding fund balance slightly. Um, we have a little bit of wiggle room, but not much more than what's on the sheet here. Um, and that carries over to the community center as well. Um, we can either take it from contingency or my preference would really just be reduce the ending fund balance for both of the funds. Um, but everything on the sheet we can do if we want to. Am I excited about doing it? No, not really, because I want to keep my fund balance, you know, above the 15%. Um, we're just slightly above it now. Um, so like I say, we do have a little bit of, of room. Um, the other sheet that I handed out is three pages, looks something similar to this. Uh, these three sheets are really in response to the Long Range Planning Task Force. Um, the cover sheet, the 2017-18 General Fund Budget Analysis, um, this is really just a big picture highlight of what happened between 2016 and 2017. Um, I don't, don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time on it, um, but some of the, the highlights from a revenue standpoint in 2016-17, uh, we originally budgeted $9,549,300. Um, we're looking like we're going to be at $9,512,800. Um, so we missed by about thirty six five. dollars um, You can kind of see the differences, taxes and assessments, um, we past due property tax collections was a lot lower than we anticipated, um, offset by cable and sanitation franchise fees that were a little bit better. Um, liquor revenue was the big miss. Um, I'm not sure if that's because everyone's now smoking marijuana or <laughs> maybe it'll come back to us at a future date. Um, fines and forfeitures were up. Traffic citations are up. Um, the other, um, we had a couple of one-time property sales, and that's really what, what gets us to the projected actual. So as we move forward into 2017-18, um, taxes and assessments are looking at about $375,500, and that's really the 4% property tax increase and the 180000 in marijuana tax. And that's based off of four dispensaries in the area, plus a little bit of catch-up, um, because we're, we'll have some some revenues from 2016-17 that we won't see until the 2017-18 budget year. Um, the first time we're anticipating seeing some, some marijuana revenues will be August 2017. Um, so we're, there's going to be a little bit of a catch up as once we get our first payment. Um, license and fees, uh, cable, water, stormwater, and sewer franchise fees are also going up slightly. Um, liquor revenue, we're looking at about a 3% increase. And then um, dropping off some of the one-time property surplus sales that we had in the last year, or I guess this current year, gets us down to $9,954,300. So that's somewhat of a change-based look at what's going on with our revenues. Um, similar story, if we look at our expenditures or expenses, 2016-17 budget, we anticipated having $9,973,560 in expenses. Um, the biggest thing is we saved about $175,900, um, 
That's primarily the result of delayed backfilling. We had turnover in police, community development, and finance. Um, so that's what's driving that. Materials and services, this is more of our traditional don't spend it if you don't have to. Uh, majority of that savings came from police. Uh, as Nate Brown talked about last meeting, we had the UGB land use analysis for 70,000 that we didn't do this year. Um, capital outlay, we have an area B obligation um, to do some work there in Kaiser Station area. We didn't do that. And also we didn't use some of our contingency money. That means we had a, a cost savings of about $477,260 in getting our 2016-17 projected expenditures to $9,496,300. So if we start with that as a base, we'll move to what's going to happen in 2017-18. Personal services, big jump, $502,100. This is assuming that we have full staffing in all of our departments for the year. Um, it's also taking into consideration the PERS increase, insurance increases, and then the cost of living step increases and, and the provisions of the union contracts. Of that $502,419,300 is police related. So that's the vast majority and that makes sense because police is the vast majority of the, of the general fund. Materials and services is going up. 72,100, uh, majority of that is police, although we're gonna see some impact in court as the citations have increased. Yes. Um, parks grants, as presented at the Parks Board, um, we're gonna take a one year time off with the grant program, and we've rolled that money into the capital outlay budget so that we can start working on the concrete at uh, the skate park. Um, the UGB land use analysis, that's rolling back in um, with hopes, as Nate Brown indicated, that we would do it next year. Although, again, that one may slide again another year. Uh, capital outlay, uh, we're bringing back the Area B obligation. And as I indicated at our last meeting, we're providing for a phone system. Uh, also, this takes into consideration the skate park work, skate park. And then we're also going to be adding some police vehicles and radios this year. Um, contingency, this is bringing back the general liability contingency, the general funds piece of it that's recorded in the administrative service fund. Um, this also includes the building reserve um, for replacement of things like HVAC, um, tiles, flooring, roofs, anything that may go wrong. Um, and also the general fund operating contingency of the 50,000 that you'll see in a few minutes. So that brings us to a total increase in expenditures of $876,300 um, with total expenditures of $10,372,600. Sorry, I think my eyes jumped there a little bit. So anyway, when we factor in the beginning budget, beginning fund balance, and then the expenditures in excess of revenues of the $418,300, which is line 18 minus line 38. Although that includes continuing. That does include contingencies and our reserves. Um, so that brings us to an ending fund balance for 2017-18 of $1,496,700, which is just above the 15% fund balance that we're looking for. So as I indicated when we looked at the budget requests in this area, we have a little bit of wiggle room, but I wouldn't want to go much beyond what's on the, requ the budget request sheets. So with that, um, let's go ahead and turn to page 142, unless you have questions. Before we, before we do that, I just want to make sure that nobody has any questions on this. I have oh, one. Dr. McGee? Uh, the ending fund balance at 15%, a little over, uh, that's a bit more than, than the four months that we have to cover, isn't it? Well, it, the 15% really is, is by policy. So if we wanted to change that, we could, we could do that, adjust the policy. But that really is based off of our history, gets us close to when we start re receiving the property tax revenue, um, usually the first week in November. Um, to put it into perspective, uh, two, 15, 16, um, I had to come back to the city council because we ran out of money in October. Um, so I, I would be hesitant to go much lower, we had to go back to council in 1516. I had to request a, a, basically a one month loan from the transportation improvement fund. 
Um, we were about two or three hundred thousand dollars short in the general fund, so I would be very hesitant to go much below the fifteen percent mark. So, if I understand what you're saying, the city has a policy of putting more in the ending fund balance than what is actually required. No, because what is required is just enough to keep the store open until the taxes come in. Right, and that's... You don't need any more than that. That's correct, and that 15% is very close to that. Some years it's mm -hmm. slightly more, some years, like Tim just mentioned, in 15, 16, it was slightly less than what we needed. Right. We're talking about four months. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Which is not 15%, but I understand what you're saying. Sometimes it could be more, but there are so many things you can do to control that, such as burning inventory and whatnot. But at any rate, uh, the difference between the 12% and the 15% would be quite a few dollars. Yes, that would be. And if we were to drop down to 12, we would probably have to re start requesting loans in end of September, I would think. So the actual policy names a percentage? Correct. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Burson. <coughs> I mean, when you say policy, um, whose policy is that? Uh, it's one of the documented financial policies we have in our budget document. Is that something that the, the council came up with? I, I believe so. Because what I'm looking at here is, is on page 60 of the budget document, it says general fund has an 18 percent um, in the balance. So I'm wondering why we have the disparity, and it seems like last, page 60, I'm sorry, there's a pie chart there, listen, the general fund with an 18 percent. And last year, it looks like we were running at 20 percent, so last year when we were here, can't spin the world backwards, but we we're saying like, where's the money at, why weren't we talking about that 5 percent? I think that may be a typo on page 60. I think that probably is reflecting 2016-17 balances. Well, is that, that's, is not that what, that's not what you have lit, listed, but. but so is this, is this saying on page 60 that the 18% general fund, the ending fund balance in the general fund is 18% of the overall ending fund balance the city has? Not that the not that the general fund balance has Thank 18 percent. Yes, you are correct. Okay, so the Thank pie you. is the pie yeah. is the entire ending fund balance of the city, and of yes. that ending fund balance, the general fund balance is 18 percent. You are correct. Yes. However, <laughs> uh, the ending fund balance does not apply to uh, other resources; only the tax resource. Our current calculation of ending fund balance is 15 percent of. Uh, current revenues of total revenues uh, Even just is not uh, from taxation of, of just the general fund yes and that would include property taxes franchise fees um, citation revenues because we would depended upon the that's not a four month gap on on those other funds so it is, Jerry. The 15 percent, as we've talked about a couple of times already this evening, is very close. It's, it, in some years, it may be slightly less than what we need. In some years, it may be slightly more than what we need for that four-year, for that four-month gap. But it is very close. So, I mean, and it's proved out a couple of times where we've had to come and ask for interfund loans, which we don't like to do, for a lot of reasons. So, Mayor Clark. Thank you. So this pie chart is, if I took out the checkbook at the end of the fiscal year, saw all the money that the city has, and then showed where that is, those fund balances from June 30 to July 1, this is where the money sits in the accounts. And of all the money in the checkbook at that time, that this is where they all sit. And the general fund dollars include the money going forward to fund those four months plus any other uh, funds that we have received. So it's essentially a snapshot of the of the bank accounts. That is, is correct. Not? Okay. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, like the, the math just not adding up to adding up for me. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna spend ten million three hundred seventy two thousand six hundred dollars in the general fund for the for the next calendar or next fiscal year, you're gonna spend eight hundred sixty four thousand three hundred eighty three dollars per month, which is uh, for four months is a lot more than one point four nine six seven hundred. There is some seasonality to some of the expenses that we incur. So the, so the ending balance that really doesn't have anything to do with being able to make it to tax day. Or at least it, it's not fully making it to tax day because if you need that, you need about, what is that, uh, 3 million, 200 and some laying in, 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 in so that to get to the four the months because you're spending 864000 I plus think some. they're saying you just can't spread that peanut butter equally across your slice of bread there on that the seasonality of the expenses mean that they are incurred uh, at a lower rate and in that portion and are we not still getting revenue during that time also? some revenues franchise fees for no, instance franchise fees only come in certain times of year so they also lag uh, until October November before we see them so, yeah. so um, I, fines and forfeitures we do too here I so are you trying to say that the, that the police in July, August, September, and October, uh, which is 75% of the general fund, is, is less during those months than November? There are, I mean, certain, there are certain things that we pay for each year that we either pay for later in the year or in lump sum versus spread out evenly throughout the year. M Mr. Burson, if I may, this, this may help, it may not. <laughs> Because <laughs> I've faced You're this, always with, helpful, I've faced sure this with the public works funds, primarily the parks fund, years and years ago. When cash was tight, we couldn't build things till the revenue came in. Um, same way with the general fund. The 15% is an operating percentage, or it pays for operations, but major capital expenses like buying police cars and phone systems and new radios were, are put off until the taxes come in. So you can't take a 12 month snapshot average because it doesn't work that way because we put off those capital purchases those big ticket purchases until after the tax revenue shows up okay i, I understand that but when 65 percent of the general fund is personal services you know you can't delay that i mean you got to have those paychecks so uh, you know is is payroll per month then um pa payroll is that two hundred thousand not two hundred thousand four into that would be Three hundred some thousand. Yep. No, I, I think you're kind of proving at our point that we can't go much below fifteen. I mean, if if, you're if, we, if we had to set aside eight hundred thousand a month times four months, we'd have to set aside much like 30, more than 30, thirty-three and a half percent. I mean, yeah. so four months is a is is a is a third of the year. So if we were to go by your calculation, that number should actually be thirty-three percent of revenues. So basically what we've done, taking into account seasonality of expenses, is we've determined in year one that we did this, this is the amount of money that we need, okay, to get from day one to, to tax day or when we get our, our revenues on average. And then we just converted that into a percentage so that it would follow the general fund expenses from year to year so we didn't have to calculate to the dollar each year what that would be. So it happens to be that in the first third of the year, we spend about 15% of our revenues in the general fund. And then in the last two thirds of the year, we spend the rest of it. So. All right. Let's, yep. uh, let's move on to the non-departmental resources part of the budget, 142. Okay. Um, also in response to the long range planning task force, there's page number two. I'm um, not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. I just want you to know that um, there were some questions about, so what are, we, what are we doing about the parks police situation? These are a range of things, and to some extent, we're working on all of them, except for the last one. Um, the last one is increasing franchise fees. It, we're not really looking at that one because it would be the same thing as implementing a dedicated fee. It would be the same people paying it, so it doesn't make sense to duplicate the efforts. Plus, it would, it would 
treat differently the city's utilities versus the other utilities that do business in the city of Kaiser. Um, so all of these things are, are in the air. Um, some of them will take a lot longer, but this is a listing of things that we're working on to try to, to resolve the, the service levels in police and parks. So with that, if we move to page 142, The, the big highlight on here is obviously the marijuana tax. Um, we'll be seeing our first payments in August 2017. Um, I built this off of the idea of four dispensaries and then also a little bit of a provision for the trickle down of the state shared revenue piece. Um, to be honest, it's a, it's a pretty big swag. Um, there's not a lot of information out. People aren't really talking a whole much yet about what, what things are gonna actually look at like. Um, the, OLCC, state police have a lot of expenses that they're going to be deducting from a lot of the revenues. So we'll have to see what, what ultimately plays out. Um, so it's, it's, it's a placeholder until we get more information. And, and quite honestly on that one, we're probably going to need about three years worth of data to really honestly be able to project a solid number into the future. You, you haven't spent that $180,000. We have. Yeah. In this budget, so it, it, part of the revenues into this budget, but it, it becomes ending fund balance basically. So. Right. Tim, um, the um, on that issue, um, when is that anticipated to come in? I mean, we've received that from the state. If I'm not we'll, we'll actually receive our first payment in August 2017. Mm -hmm. And you roughly, I mean, is this a monthly thing, or are they going to be? This will be a quarterly, quarterly payment that we receive. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, with the marijuana tax, it's my understanding that we're dedicated on where we can spend it. It's not just a free-for-all. For example, like 10% of it has to go towards law enforcement. Well, the, the, the state shared revenue piece does have some attachments to it. Um, the local city piece does not. And much beyond that, um, really kind of business as usual as far as revenues go, we're going to see a little bit of increases in the franchise fees. Um, the utility, the city utilities um, are increasing in, in comparatively with the rate increases that we have in the utility funds. Um, cigarette tax is going to continue to decline. Liquor tax, um, the League of Oregon Cities says a 3% increase. Um, they've kind of... We've been wrong for the last two years with them, so I'm <laughs> but it's the best we have at this point. Um, with that, if you have any questions. Questions on the non-departmental resources in the general fund? Okay. Mr. Burke. We have a, a, a contract that is expired with our cable companies. And we're just kind of coasting along right now, is that correct, with the franchise fees? I think Salem was doing something and we were going to see what they were going to do. How does that, how Coast, does that go? Coasting on? is not really the right word. Um, <laughs> th that's, an in, that's an interesting question. I'm not going to get into the legality of it a lot. The reality is that we're doing a year-to-year -year franchise with them, uh, and there are some benefits to us to doing that. So the biggest benefit is that we have very preferential language um, in our existing contract for uh, public education and government TV payment, PEG funds, that could potentially go away if we do something very different because they're fighting against having to pay that, which would mean that all of the televised council meetings would either have to be funded directly out of the general fund or simply go away. So. If it's up to me, we will continue doing yearly renewals with them ad infinitum to protect that language. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we'll move. We're moving on to non-departmental requirements, page one forty-four. So for this page, I would. Uh, refer you to the third page of the handout um, that I provided that looks somewhat like this, the, the landscape version. Um, obviously the big item within the non-departmental requirements is the administrative service charges. Um, 
that, as we have discussed, really represents you know, city manager, city attorney, city recorder, HR, finance, IT, facilities, public works, um, all of those facilities, yeah. plant, you know, the building here. Uh, so really, what we'd have to take into consideration is majority of those costs are personnel related. Um, so to the extent that we say we want to fund a police officer or a, even a parks person, um, there would be some significant impacts that we would have to absorb. Um, in order, to, the, the big message, if we were looking to add a police officer of approximately 100,000 to 120,000 in direct fund cost, we would be looking at laying off um, two people within the indirect general fund area. Um, so that would be the legal assistant, the deputy city recorder, the, the I can't think of the HR generalist, um, probably two accounting technicians if we wanted to go there, and one IT person. And that would really, um, we, at that point, we'd have to ask ourselves, can departments of one really function in a somewhat full service city? Um, so that's, that's the message. If we wanted to add a police officer, it's really, a, at the best case scenario, a two for one deal, because a lot of the overhead, the indirect general fund costs, are not 100% impacting the general fund. They're spread across all of the different um, funds that we have. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that there for your consideration and, and knowledge. Um, on the non-department requirements page, other than that, there's not a lot of excitement. Um, some of the expenses are going down because we've taken care of things in 2016-17 um, that don't need to be repeated in 17-18. Um, specifically, with some of the legal services, um, there's projects there that aren't gonna continue into the next year. And then also in contractual services, uh, we had to pay off Marion County some property taxes on some properties that the city owns. And that they were past due property taxes on the Rollins pieces out at Kaiser Station. And we paid them off because they were just sitting there accruing interest. And it's, you know, we don't wanna waste the city's, city's money by paying interest. Um, so with that, if there's any other questions. Questions on this? Uh, we'll go with Councillor Freeman and then Councillor Parsons. So the art walk or the art, art stipends, are we, so are we not having or receiving any, refresh my memory, I guess, because I thought the sure. Kaiser Chamber Foundation helped with some of these stipends. Th that is correct. It's a, it's a pass through. Okay, on so we're the, getting money from them. Correct. On the, on the page just before, you'll see that we have, have resources coming in for those. I missed that. Okay. Art wall revenues. Oh, yeah. 30, yeah. 31. So it's a dollar for dollar pass through. That is correct. Uh, okay. Right. okay sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Um, so if we make it, when we make changes to the request, it reflects on this page, right? It just uh, goes back. That over. would be correct. Okay. And we can either address those now or we can wait till um, the end when we do the formal budget adoption. Um, I'll leave that up to the, the committee which way they would like to go. And again, I would just say if it's more of a policy decision, do you feel this is an appropriate use of the city's funds, not does the city have the funds to do this? Okay. Um, we'll just take it out of the ending fund balance or the contingency. Okay. I think unless anybody objects, I'd like to get through this and then do the, do, do the uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, your two for one for the police officer, is that based on city council not doing anything for funding? Th that is correct. That's based off of existing resources that we have available. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that's basically the method of if we need to cut to get that position, what does it look like? It looks like a two for one. And that's primarily, not only are cops expensive because they have specialized training and, and whatnot, but they're also fully general, general funded, okay? Whereas a lot of the other positions are spread throughout various funds, so you don't get a dollar for dollar benefit of laying them off. You may get 78 cents on the dollar or 40 cents on the dollar, so you have to lay off multiple folks to get the same amount of money, so. All right. There's no other questions on the non-departmental resources. We'll move on to park operations. I'll turn this over to Bill Lawyer. Thank you, Tim. Um, really one significant, I will say, change this year from last year um, has been mentioned earlier this evening. Um, the parks grant program has been suspended, proposed to be suspended for next fiscal year. 
and those funds have been allocated into capital improvements so we can do some repairs on the skate park. Um, we combined, and I want to explain that because it's a little, it's not quite exactly as what it appears like in the numbers on the page. It shows $20,000 in the grant program. There wasn't really $20,000 in there from last year. There was $15,000 in there. There was an additional five that was put in a reserve for a proposed skate park grant project that some folks brought forward um, and were approved for, but they were approved for it two fiscal cycles ago and they weren't going to complete it until 16, 17. That never materialized. And so we took that $5,000 that was in a reserve, put it in the grant program, so it looked like there was $20,000, but it was really only $15,000. I hope that made sense. I'm not sure I said that quite as clearly as I wanted to. So what Robert and I did this year is we took the $15,000 that would be there for the grant program and added $11,000 to that, which has been what we've been able to use for capital outlay the last couple years, combine those two numbers to get to the $26,100 for this year's budget. Other than that, everything new. The only other change, there's a slight change in, in contractual services for some additional um, seasonal temporary help. That's from increased revenue. That increase in expenditures comes from increased revenue basically from the cell tower at Bear Park because that rent increases annually. So we get a little more money. So we've allocated those additional funds into contractual services. So. Any questions on the park operations? Councilor Freeman. So Bill, on line 51, it has the amphitheater at 51,000. Uh, I'm sorry, 10,000. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like we would to all see love 1, that one We had a lot of fun down um, there. Yeah, I would say they would all love me at that. Be like um, Def Had Danielle wanted to throw a party, we could ever throw a party down there. Yeah, that. <laughs> so it shows um, 10,000, and then there's a budget note um, that also says upon completion of the concert series, 2,000 will be paid to the operator as a general sponsorship stipend. But that isn't always paid. Is that? It, it is. Is it always paid? Yeah, okay. it used to be that he would come and request funding from the council each year based on the difference between his expenses and revenues. And about two years ago, the council decided to simply provide that stipend each year, which makes up that difference, basically. And so the other 8,000, is, is that to support the concert series that we have? <coughs> no, that's, that's expenses for maintenance of the amphitheater itself. Um, for, um, you know, extra fertilization, weed control, power, or well, the water's... I mean, the water, I guess, is... A not quite free. There's power. We pay for the power for the, for the pump because there's its own well in that park. Um, so the power for the pump, the power that's used at the concession stand, all the power that's used at the amphitheater is paid for from that line item. Um, the garbage, when the concerts, you know, create the garbage, that comes out of that line item. So just anything that's directly related to the amphitheater itself comes from there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Parsons? I have a question on line um, 56 on the Lily maintenance. So is this in the contract that we will pay for restroom supplies? $1,000 for restroom supplies? Wouldn't the Little League pay no, for restroom supplies? No, I don't. Supplies? Yeah. Council Parsons, I don't remember honestly if it's actually in the, the agreement. Okay but it is agreed to between the city and the Little League that we would provide these things, and that's one of the things we provide. Oh, okay. The things that's that are just kind of weird, because I, I understand fertilization and weed control, and I understand equipment maintenance, but then this pops out restroom supplies. It's a and, little... And I'll, to be real honest with you, I think we buy a case of toilet paper a year. Okay. It's not... And that's for the permanent restrooms, not for the porta-potties at the Little League complex. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, Thank quite, you. Quite honestly... Um, that expense is a lot less than was intent. It was than we thought it was going to be many years back when um, KYSA and Little League came and asked us for about thirty-six thousand dollars a year in support, right. and we tentatively agreed to that based on you know okay we'll take it over like a park. Mm -hmm. um, but Little League, uh, since they've had that contract, have been 
taking care of most of the expenses through volunteer labor and our expenses have been significantly less than we anticipated. Well, yeah, I understand that. I just thought that was yeah. weird. That was yeah. kind of out there a little different. It's a lot of toilet paper. Six thousand dollars a person. Any other questions on uh, Dr. McGee? On uh, line fifty-five, the recreation project is that different than the boys and girls project? That is that is the boys and girls club that's, project. That is it. Well, they have asked for that those funds also two thousand. Yeah, and that's this is where they show up in the budget right here. Okay. As, t as Tim said, those those requests were included. This is where it's included. All right. Any other questions on this part? All right. We did the we did the community development um, on budget on Tuesday, so we are on to municipal court. Well, I would say the excitement with municipal court this year is you can see our, our court fines have gone up. Um, somewhat significantly. We're getting back to, you know, some of our previous years before the, before the columns on, on this budget. Um, so that's really the, the big impact that you're going to see, and that's going to float through um, when you start looking at things like contractual services, judges' time, um, interagency assessments. Um, I did, there, there's probably going to be a budget adjustment coming at some point in time once I figure out the real number um, related to municipal court because with the increased revenues, like I say, the variable costs have increased beyond what we currently have in this budget um, for 2016-17. So I would say keep that in mind when you look at 2017-18, and I think that's going to be much more realistic of where, where we're probably going to end up. So um, with that, if you have any questions at this point. Councillor Anderson. Okay, Tim, let's go over to line 26 on page 152. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, sure. in terms of this, the costs that we are incurring on behalf of the court or municipal court, is this like all for the judge? Is this um, other staff type Line people? 26 would be for our municipal court clerk. Um, there's two conferences that she's part of an association that she would like to go to. Um, in the past, we couple years we've been kind of short staffed and not had a lot of available resources to do anything. Um, but it is important that she continues to go to those because that's where she keeps abreast of a lot of the changes and potential regulations that are coming up that, that we need to be aware of. Um, the th increase is really we have two people that I would really like to send to um, at least one of the conferences. Okay, thanks. Um, on line 29, the peer court, is that how does that play in with their $10,500, $10,700 request? It's um, on page 151, the page previous, there is line 10, which is peer court donations. Oh. So, so if, you, if you net the two of those, that equates to their $10,500. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Which is, again, 250 less than they're requesting. Because we budgeted status quo, and they're asking for 250 difference. Okay. So it, it looks like each one of these years um, we're bringing in more revenues than we're spending. Where's where's the ending balance going on on this fund? For, for these, these are this is part of the general fund, so it rolls into the one million four hundred ninety-six thousand dollar ending fund balance. Any other questions on municipal court? All right, moving on to police operations. Chief. Well, I'll tell you on the one hand, it's humbling to be coming to you with a current service level budget. Um, I've seen Mr. Anderson and Mr. Burson down at the Capitol where I've testified for DOJ, for OIA, for DPSST, for OSP, for the YDC, and they would love to have a current service level budget and uh, I doubt they're gonna, gonna get it. So we can celebrate that uh, we watch our dollars pretty closely, and uh, not only are we current service level, but uh, actually we're a little bit over this year, and so we're thankful for that. Um, but uh, because it's pretty close to current service level, it's pretty easy to walk through. <laughs> if you have questions on the, on the resources side, I'm gonna turn you to uh, Tim Wood. 
That's on page 153. Then I'll go to page 154. I'm just going to hit the high points. Um, the community service officer, we've talked about that. You see that change from projected is 94.2, but you'll, uh, I think you'll see that the uh, proposed 27, or proposed fiscal year 18 is uh, pretty close to the budgeted fiscal year 17. And he talked to you earlier about the uh, change in the FTEs. Uh, again, we took a, fu a full FTE and have now a part-time, and the rest of that FTE is, appears in, as temporary employees on line 34. Those numbers don't change, however, in the bottom line. Uh, over time, you'll see a 2.1% increase. Over time uh, is a computed as a function of the total costs of the sergeants and the police officers. Um, and there isn't an exact science behind that, but uh, after years and years and years of tracking that, uh, that function has ended up being pretty close to what we're going to uh, and end up paying. By the way, that equates to about 13 hours per officer per month. Um, although uh, there's some officers that see maybe three hours a month, and there are some like detectives in uh, street crimes or crew that end up seeing a whole lot more than that. On wellness, uh, y'all have asked about that in a couple of them. Uh, again, we budget for the liability and usually end up seeing some savings there, which goes towards uh, ending fund balance. Any questions on page 154? Page 155. Oh, I mean, uh, John, on, uh, on the overtime, what would adding one staff do? What, what kind of an impact would that have on overtime? You'd probably see it go up. Uh, you'd probably see the overtime go up. Right. Uh, it. If we fully, if we hired four officers, for example, um, then you might, well, you, even then you'd see it go up. Because what happens is the guys end up making later rest or get tied up on something or, or get tasked as resources on a, an investigation. That's where the overtime comes from. Um, not a, not a tremendous, in other words, the, the backfill for when we have to hire an officer in overtime isn't, isn't a tremendous driver of this line item. It's a significant part of it, but it, it's not going to make a difference as far as being able to hire another officer. I think I answered that in kind of a roundabout way. Okay. Any, other, any other questions on the personnel services side of the police budget? All right. Okay, page 155, uh, the reserve officer program. Um, You'll see that uh, fiscal year uh, 18 proposes 21,000. That's uh, 6,000 above the projected for this year. That's because we had no additional, uh, no new hired, uh, newly hired uh, reserve officers. Uh, but uh, that is, will probably not be the case. That was an aberration. So we'll probably end up spending that again, uh, spending that 21,000, which is why we're keeping the same number as we had in fiscal year 17. Popping down to line 11, uh, labor attorney, we budget 30,000 just so we're not scrambling for funds. This year we only spent 5,000. Yes. Um, I anticipate uh, we'll probably end up keeping that low again. Uh, but again, we're budgeting just for the liability. Gasoline, uh, we didn't spend very much this past year. We, we typically buy about 21,000 gallons. We uh, budgeted at $2.5 per gallon. I've been a little bit apprehensive these past uh, weeks that we might, uh, <laughs> but now I hear that it's going back down again. So, so we're going to keep keep that at fifty-five thousand. Uh, you may recall that it was significantly higher than that about a handful of years ago, and and uh, we're trying to again, as the city manager and, and and Tim testified, we're trying to narrow the budgets down to be more reflective of what we're spending, um, rather than uh, setting high and uh, and looking at savings. Um, finally, uh, the hiring expense, you'll notice that uh, fiscal year 18 is 75, uh, fiscal year 17 was 3,000. That's because we're so buried back in the detectives unit uh, that we're now sending background investigations uh, for new employees, reserve officers and cadets, uh, well not so much for cadets, but for new officers and reserve officers out to uh, private contractors. So I tell you what, that is a pretty simple police department budget. Uh, I don't know whether I need to move on to revenue sharing now or, or wait. 
I guess there still may be questions on page 155. Questions on the operations side of the police budget. JD. I'll tee up an easy one for you here. How many vehicles make up the fleet that account for these expenses? Yeah, you know, I, I asked myself that earlier too, and I added it up, but I didn't write it down. It's that many. <laughs> <laughs> about, four, about 40. 40, about okay. 40. Thank you. Yep. Good count. <laughs> Any other questions on the police operations side? All right. Moving on to revenue sharing. Revenue sharing, uh, the two big ticket items in there are on line 14 and 15. Uh, 15 is a big ticket item, but it's half what it was last fiscal year. We're looking at $70,000 for car purchases. Uh, I tell you, car purchases are, it seems like it's an ever evolving and always planning and um, uh, thing we're looking at. This year we're only looking at hiring, uh, buying one new car, uh, but there are, there are two used cars and uh, uh, one, two in-car videos and some other incidentals taking us to 70,000. Next year, we're looking at buying three cars and then four, and then in fiscal year 21, buying six. Uh, you, you, would, you might suggest, why don't you just level that out? But it just doesn't work to level it out. We don't, we don't want to be selling cars that are still good cars. So this year, we're just buying one car, $70,000, a couple of used cars. And that works for us this year because you see $100,000 on line 14. Those are police radios. We're married at the hip with the city of Salem with their radio, uh, their radio system. Uh, they're going to a new radio system, which forces us to buy new handheld radios. Uh, frankly, we've been on, this, on these handheld radios for, on this current system for, I want to say, 25 years. Uh, so it's time to move on. Um, that's going to cost us about $300,000, down from about $600,000. Um, this year, we're looking to throw $100,000 into that, and, but we've, we've decided that it makes more sense to lease those radios, lease to buy those radios, because they're going to be with us for a long, long time, almost a pay-as-you-go. Uh, so you see 100000 this year toward that 300000 and then... Uh, I don't know where the lease payments will appear. Tim can address it if you need to. That's revenue sharing for the police department. Questions, Mr. Barker? Yeah, as far as grants are concerned, have, have we entertained the idea about body cameras and stuff like that? I mean, the yeah, there, there are small body cam grant, uh, grants available. Um, we're an agency that can, you know, we're not so small that a grant could buy for everybody. We're not so large that uh, that the, uh, the there's there's a research component to it. Follow me. So we're in that middle ground where it just doesn't really pay. So so for us to get grants for uh, body cams means we're going to end up buying a lot of body cams too. Uh, the last time we looked at that, which was two fiscal years ago, it would it would have been a twenty two thousand dollar purchase for the city. Uh, I've asked. Uh, when I've met with uh, community members, if they have an interest in seeing us in body cams, and uh, there hasn't been a big, big push for that, uh, the officers are, uh, they're half in and half out. So, so, there, so again, there's a cost to it for us. There, there's an additional cost, which is oftentimes not, there's actually two additional costs, which storage. are kind of lost uh, on body cams. The first one is storing the data, okay, and that's huge, because they generate a ton of data. And then associated with that is hiring somebody to manage the data, and when people ask for it as a public records request, which happens often with cities that have body cams, you have to redact faces, you have to do all kinds of things with that data, and that consumes a huge amount of time. And so the cameras themselves are actually, I mean, like everything police related, they're you know, a, a $300 item being crammed into a $600 paycheck. But the real expense is the ongoing expense of controlling and managing the data. So Yeah, I'll make one more comment, too. Uh, Lieutenant Copeland here is the one that's been tending to the body cam conversation for the past few years. And uh, they're one of those crazy things that you know if you just keep waiting, they keep getting better. Like this redaction thing, now, now many of the body cam software has automatic redaction. Well, that was a huge cost driver just... Uh, just two years ago, and 
And uh, while you got to pay for that redaction, at least you're not paying FTEs to do it. No. Okay. Any other questions on revenue sharing? Yeah, Ron. So, so Chief, the um, crime in the town, the, the, the work, I mean, just the major crimes, I, um, you know, the, has that increased in the, in the past year? Lieutenant Copeland? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. Look, I, I just remember after the last budget meeting, there were some incidences that happened in, in, in Kaiser where, where some people were killed um, uh, father-son argument that ended up not being charged, but anyway, somebody ended up dying. You folks were involved in that. Uh, it used to be a pretty rare thing to have uh, those type of instances in, in, in the city. Um, yeah. So as far as as far as uh, major crime, maybe, let me preface it, preface, it by, preface it by saying this: the average citizen that does not engage in a high-risk lifestyle has nothing to worry about in this town any time of day or night. Uh, it is a very safe town, very safe town. If you're engaged in a high-risk lifestyle, you have all kinds of things to worry about. Um, crime, uh, I, I turn to Andrew uh, jokingly. Uh, we've had a spate recently of people breaking into cars. Uh, yeah. A lot of them are breaking into cars that are left unlocked. And uh, so things like that, we're so close to them that for us, yeah, there's an increase in crime. If you look at the year-over-year -year numbers, uh, we're about where you'd expect us to be. Uh, and uh, as comfortable as a person can be um, with, with a level of crime, uh, we're, we're about there. Now, having said that, uh, I've said many times that property crimes in this city largely go uninvestigated because we simply don't have the resources to investigate the person's crimes that these high-risk people bring to us uh, to put the resources to addressing the uh, property crimes. I'll also tell you this, that... Uh, State police is suffering under uh, tremendous uh, cutbacks in their uh, crime labs. Uh, one of the best tools we had uh, was a high-throughput DNA. We were one of six agencies in the state that uh, used high-put DNA. Uh, that allows us to, uh, to take a quick, quick swab, uh, survey the felony database, and find out who these people are. They're committing crimes, uh, property crimes. It's so much more effective than fingerprints. Um, high-throughput DNA allows us to pro allows uh, OSP to process 75 uh, DNA samples at a time instead of one at a time. Uh, that, that is not in the future in Oregon. But things like that would help us a lot to be more effective even with limited resources. Thank you. Hey, Tim, I thought perusing through this, there you had a chart in this budget that talked about different crime categories and then there was years across the top and there was for a trending. I, did, I thought I saw it in this document. Did I not? No. Well, that's correct. It's part of the front section under the police department. Um, but I think it might speak to Mr. Burson's point, too. Wow. At page 88. <laughs> yes. Actually, page 89 has the chart. 89. I don't know, I thought that I thought that spoke very highly of the uh, the job that the chief and his and his folks are doing. So. Yeah, but when those numbers go up, uh, it's not because we're not doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people, sometimes bad people just do bad things. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. The but I tell you where uh, where uh, where. The job the guys are doing is reflected is in the uh, is in the clearance rates. Um, our clearance rates are very good. Like if you look at, at on page 89, there's that table, the fourth uh, row down, violent crimes clearance rates uh, average for cities our size is about 48 and percent cleared, and for us it's about 78 percent cleared. That's very good. Property crimes, nationally, it's about 24% cleared, and we're just under that at about 23% cleared. Uh, but clearance rates are really what uh, demonstrate uh, your police department's effectiveness. And I'll remind you again that uh, we've taken a new tact in recent years. We're much more interested in preventing crime from happening, so we don't put a whole lot of stock in whether the numbers are going up and down. Uh, if they're wildly uh, out of sync, then we certainly want to figure out if uh, we need to pay attention 
uh, to something in particular. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so a couple of things on the on the traffic citations. It looks like the numbers uh, of citations and warnings is coming down. Um, in fact, it looks like we kind of switched over to giving more citations than warnings. But uh, when you compare with 2012, you know, there's roughly, um, you know, 5,300 um, citations and warnings. And now this, in 16, we were down to uh, 2,400. So is, is that, that, is that um, a choice on your part? I mean, I don't think people are speeding less or driving in lanes the wrong or whatever all the other side cell phones seem to be a popular one yeah the, um, the big change from between fiscal years between calendar years 2013 and 2014 were that we disbanded the traffic team so that we could stand up our street crimes team our our community uh, response unit that's the unit that uh, investigates these drug houses and uh flop houses and and uh works prostitutes and things of that nature. Things, cry, uh, crime that is persistent enough that patrol can't unplug and investigate it and not, not of such a level that it requires a detective. Uh, that middle ground there was just not being intended to as well as I thought it would. So we, we took the traffic team and threw them at street crime. We now have the traffic team back, at least with one motor officer. Uh, but that's why you see those numbers drop down so precipitously between 2013 and 2014. The reason you see so many uh, uh, fewer warnings written in 2016 uh, is we had a, mo a motor officer who was injured and he was, uh, he was simply not riding a bike for about four months. He's still, still not on a bike, matter of fact. My, Sorry to hear that. My, my, uh, my cell phone ticket in 2013 definitely will, will there'll be less of those moving forward because I learned my lesson, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chief Teague, if you were to reinstigate that the DNA uh, program that you had before, what would that cost based upon what you see the need to be today? What would that cost the department to do? It wouldn't cost us anything. It's it freed us. It's a sta it's no, state fund. If we had to, if we had to provide that service for if, ourselves, if we had to provide it, uh, it'd be impossible. It's, uh, it would cost us, it would cost my entire budget to, okay, to do that. Okay, so, but, but the system is free to us to use now? Uh, it, except that it's not, it is not stood up. OSP, it's not funded for OSP to do that. Okay. Yeah. And, the, and there's, uh, there's not so complicated reasons why that is, but it's just simply not happening right now. All budget related, all state budget related. DNA is very expensive. Uh, it is not something that an agency our size could even begin to think about doing. All right. Well, if there's no other questions on this, we'll take a motion on the general services funds. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, move approval of general service funds as uh, er, yes. presented. Presented. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, we approve the general services funds as presented, with the caveat that we can change it at the end. Uh, is there any discussion? Yes, uh, Chair. I believe this, uh, if we're going to um, have a discussion on the additions, this would be the appropriate place to move a friendly amendment. I think that what we're going to do is we're, when, before, when we get to the port where we approve the entire budget at the end, my plan was to make those changes then. Okay. Okay. Ron? No, I'm out. Okay. That's, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. So we're going to look at those. Yeah, we'll do, we'll, we're going to do that at the end before we make the final, final motion. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right, motion carries. And then we'll, let's take a five minute break. Um, please try to keep it as close to five minutes as possible so we can finish this up. Thank you, we're in recess.
Allergy. Oh, yeah. All right. We are back, and we are gonna go. We're gonna dive headlong into the special purpose funds. So, looks like page 162. Uh, for this fund, just a reminder, um, community center fund, that we have one request on the budget request form, and that's the solar eclipse event. Um, and again, I would just say if, if you feel like this is an appropriate use of funds, we can add it in and reduce the um, ending fund balance for this fund. Wouldn't that just be a loan, though? Correct. Um, we would, we, you're, yeah, you're correct. Okay. We would have a revenue and then an expense that we would be adding in. Uh, no, you can make it at the end. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Jeannie. Right. Tim, do you agree with the estimates on the revenue that the city would realize that the Chamber of Commerce proposed? Oh, for the solar eclipse? Yes. Um, there's a risk involved, yes. I'm not going to deny that. Um, worst case scenario, if it's a complete flop and no one shows up, um, we would be using this $8,000 as an investment in the community in hopes of, of having tourism. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily be out of line with the purpose of the funds. Um, but yes, the city is taking a risk. But I, 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 I believe with the hubbub and the excitement surrounding the event that yes, we'll, we'll, we'll see the money back. See something at least. Yeah, that Correct. wasn't the chamber, JD. That was me, Parks Foundation. Um. Oh, that's right. Oh, so it was Marlene wrong. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> okay. and, and just to, to give you some perspective on that, from from what we've talked about in um, the, the the festival board and so forth, um, everywhere else in the state is pretty much sold out in terms of the camping and facilities and so forth. We're a, a latecomer that way, and so that's another good reason to be really helpful about that. Yeah, yeah. All, all cities that land the forty fifth parallel are gonna are gonna stand to to benefit from this event fairly significantly. Oh, so. In the past. Yes. It's, it's, it's an in and out, so it's quick. And, and uh, I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, 45th, right. Well, I think it's 46. <laughs> <laughs> well, them too, but, but primarily 45th. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Tracy Davis, a city recorder, to go through the community center fund. Oh. Did you have a question? Right. So, just, just a second comment. Uh, if, if they just rent out the spaces that are planned right now for the campsite, that'll bring in a gross of 49000 Not to mention anything that comes on above that from whatever else the activities are. So I think with the hubbub that's going on and with, with the lack of space uh, and the fact that we're on the 5-5, I think it's a pretty good opportunity. Okay. Any other questions on this? Yeah, Mayor Clark. So in doing this allocation, um, how are we going to indicate that this is expected then to be returned to this fund, that the uh, proceeds will be returned to this? Is, we're going to phrase it as a loan. I mean, how are we going to document that, that I, I we know it's coming back? I, th I think that in the motion, you would just simply state um, that you would fund the expense out of the TOT dollars with the expectation that the same amount of funding would come back to TOT based on revenues submitted to the city. From the event. From the event. Gotcha. Okay. I think that's all you need to say, and then we'll track it mechanically. Okay. We'll make sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. There's no other questions. Oh. You good, JD? Okay. Okay. Tracy? No. Oh. Are you ready? For the community center? Oh, 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 okay. Do you want to talk oh, about no, it anymore? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just getting ahead of myself again. <laughs> That's okay. Um, a couple years ago, you had asked for a snapshot of the activity in the community center, so we had prepared this chart. So I passed one out to everybody. It kind of gives you an update of what the rooms are being used for, what size of rooms are being used for, and our revenues for the last few years. And um, the highlighted columns or rows are what we have actually on the calendar right now. So those events haven't happened for May and June, obviously, and the money hasn't all came in for those, but that's what we have on the calendar. But the revenue, the 126000 at the bottom of the column on the bottom right-hand side of the page, that is as of um, 
March or April 30th. That was our revenue. So we are, I think Tim ran me the numbers today. We are half a percent behind last year at the same time. So we're right on track to hit 145,000 this year. So uh, the center's busy and um, it's uh, hopping. Today was very busy. We had mayor's prayer breakfast. We had Portland State University and the other three or four rooms live streaming going on with several cities across so we're becoming a very desired uh, business meeting center which is very nice so um, we can go through the numbers the revenue numbers um, we do have the tot the transit occupancy tax dollars that help fund the community center uh, we do bring in like portland state today i believe they had all the counties in oregon were represented so there were several staying at the quality inn attending here so we do bring people from out of town in so um, good purpose for the TOT money uh, personnel last year you um, the, our um, temporary employee was made permanent full-time or regular full-time not permanent regular full-time employee thank you she's um, tremendous asset to the city Absolutely. so um, so basically all the personnel costs are just uh, the slight increase with the step uh, step and cost of living on um, page 163, most of the um, amounts under materials and services are status quo with the exception of uh, janitorial services and supplies. With more activity comes more supplies and dirtiness. <laughs> The only word I can think of at the moment. So those we've increased. We do separate separate out the supplies that we use in the community center base from the rest of the city supplies. So we do track those. Bill and I work real closely on um, those costs for both janitorial service and um, the supplies. The other line item that you will see an increase in the administrative services. Uh, there is an increase in the HR. We. We use temporary event hosts, and so those we seem to go through those quite often, and we seem to be recruiting often. So the Human Resources Department plays a big part in that. So that line item was increased a little bit more for their activity in our operation. And the last one is uh, last year we ha you gave us twenty-eight thousand dollars to spend on furnishings and fixtures. We spent nineteen thousand of that on a new upgraded sound system which is working very well. And the others on some smaller items. This next year, some of our larger projectors need to be replaced, still replacing carpet tiles. Uh, sometimes the stains just can't be removed any longer. So those are the um, capital um, outlay items. So any questions? Bruce, yes, or, Thanks. sorry. Um, Tracy, can you talk just a little bit? This is not a budget item, but talk. Uh, I, I recall this coming up kind of in our when I was uh, on the festival advisory board liaison role um, about how we market ourselves and that sort of thing. We we market ourselves a few different ways. Um, we belong to a few different associations, Salem Chamber. We are a member of Salem Chamber. We advertise on their website. We also. Um, Salem, or is it Travel, Travel Salem? We uh, have a video um, advertising on that. We're part of the Mid Willamette Valley Wedding Planners Association. So Christian goes to their meetings and we have hosted some of their things here. We hosted a greeters breakfast for Salem Chamber last year. We marketed that way. We have our brochure, website. Those are a few ways that we do. A lot of our business comes from referrals. Hmm. We are finding people will refer us. So. Mm -hmm. Well, someone who, who attends a lot of meetings in Salem, uh, this is something I got to believe that Salem, city of Salem, is a bit envious of us being able to have a really quality uh, facility here mm -hmm. to do that. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Bush. <coughs> so um, you said that one of the groups was staying at the Quality Inn, but in, instead of using their rooms, they, they used your rooms. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that was a concern at one time when it was the Renaissance Inn that we would be pulling uh, business away from. So my question really comes in, so there's talk about another hotel uh, in, the, in the future planning, and it's not this budget again, on what that impact would be. I mean, so a couple of things. Is Quality Inn coming over here yelling and screaming that you're taking my people away? And with another hotel, do you think it's going to affect 
I, little revenue. Well, one thing, the, the quality in our meeting space is much larger than what they can accommodate. We can accommodate more people than they can. Um, the Holiday Inn Express, I'm not sure if they have a conference room in their plans or not. They may have a very small one, if any, but uh, they're not mm -hmm. intending to do a lot of conferencing at that, mm -hmm. at that facility. Thank we, you. Uh, we also, we've established a relationship with the quality and we refer people there, they refer people here. Same with the Heritage Association. Um, I know Christian just met with the new um, sales coordinator at the Quality Inn. So we try and work together. And if we can't accommodate somebody, we're first ones to refer them to our local places. So, so far we've done okay and not had any screaming that we're taking business away from them. Okay. All right. Any other questions on this budget? If not, we'll take a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the community center fund as presented. Second. Oh, did you want to do the amendment? <laughs> oh, I thought we were going to do that later. Okay. It's up to you. You're making the motion. We're, we're making the motion. Now. Okay. <laughs> uh, in that instance, I would... <laughs> don't do that. Um, uh, let's see. Would I withdraw my motion or... We haven't voted on it yet. Well, he, it was moved and seconded, oh, okay. so yeah, it had to be withdrawn. Okay. Friendly well, amendment? Friendly amendment. Okay. I would like to make a friendly amendment, uh, Mr. Chair, that we add the uh, Kaiser Parks Foundation request for $8,000 for the solar eclipse event, uh, noting that this will be a refunded to this fund when the revenues from that event are submitted to the city from the Parks Foundation. I'd second it. And you have to accept, so, he has to accept you know, it first. I would accept oh, no. it, and then she has to, she I, has to accept it. And I will it. accept yeah. it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's all you do. All right. So we will be adjusting both the revenue side and the expense side <coughs> to accommodate that. Correct. Okay. Because it was a friendly amendment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So it's been I moved. Oh. I have a question on the amendment. Yeah. So you're, are, are you saying that the, that the funds that come in, the first funds, will be towards reimbursing this fund? That is correct. Thank you. All right. So it has been moved a variety of times and ways, but moved and seconded that <laughs> we, we approve the community center fund with uh, the addition of $8,000, with an eight, of making an $8,000 loan from the transient occupancy tax um, line item to, or from transient occupancy tax funds that will be loaned to the, um, the Eclipse Festival and it will be repaid with the first money coming back from the Eclipse Festival. Revenue. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right. All right. Uh, public education government. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this fund is uh, public education government funds that we receive from primarily Comcast. Um, these funds are restricted for use for broadcasting. Um, the budget for this upcoming year is very similar to the previous years. Um, at this point, we're just doing the ongoing um, broadcasting administrative kind of things in addition to replacing equipment as it fails. And with that, if there's any questions. Yeah. Councilor Freeman. So Tim, um, I sit on the Traffic Bikeways Pedestrian Safety Committee and um, it we requested to, the committee actually requested that those committee meetings be televised. And I know you were looking into the budget. So with the broadcasting fees that are listed, does it add the Traffic Bikeways Pedestrian Committee to being broadcast along with the council meetings and planning and parks foundation? At this point, it does not. Does not, okay. Thank you. Mayor Clark. Well, follow up, what would it cost to add them in? It's roughly $500 per thing that we add. So and they meet monthly. Yes, so it'll be, be $6,000. Approximately $6,000 to do so. Correct. Any other questions on this fund? All right, take a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to uh, approve the public education government fund as adopt or presented. As adopted. As amended. <laughs> ah, second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the public education government fund as presented with the caveat that we can change it later. Uh, any discussion? Okay, go for it. So am I, am I reading this right that there's, there's $228,600 
in in our uh, Indian balance here, the restricted for operation? That's that is correct. That's correct. And that's because our six thousand dollars that the councilor Freeman would like to add to this uh, would just bite into that a little yes. bit. Um, so uh, I know we've had a motion, and I hate to you can do a confuse it, everything, but I would like to make hey, we're a getting good at the we're getting good at the roundabout motion. Yeah, so. to, to add six thousand dollars to um, allow. Um, what was the name of your committee? I'm sorry. Traffic, bikeways, <laughs> pedestrian safety committee. I probably have that back. To put too. them on oh, TV. Yeah. So hey. I mean, we got a lot, we got some funds here. Let's let's use them so the people know what's going on out there. Yeah. So a friendly amendment. So you you two would have to accept, accept it. So now you want now you want to spend money, Ron? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to spend money. I want more. I want more police officers. I want to spend money. Oh, uh, that's accept. Yeah. yeah, I would accept that. I would accept. All right, so <laughs> it has been uh, now moved, seconded, and amended that we accept the Public Education Government Fund with the addition of $6,000 to put the, out of restricted operations, to put the, uh, to put the traffic safety bikeways. bikeways the committee with the longest possible acronym. Committee on TV. Yes. So, all right, so now, we, uh, now, now that motion is now on the floor for discussion. <coughs> Dr. McGee. I can see some differences in that committee uh, than some other committees, but uh, how long will it be before the other committees will want to be televised? Well, my, and I don't where's want the, to. Uh, where will this end? Well, if they're not before, then they won't be there. In other words, I understand how they like to be on TV. Uh, maybe we could swap our time with theirs or something of that nature, but I think it's a, uh, the camel's nose under the tent. And I would vote against it. Any other? Okay, Councillor Freeman. And I will just uh, share some comments uh, to Jerry. Um, actually, this was a request to the Traffic um, Bikeway Pedestrian Safety Committee from Rhonda Rich from the West Kaiser Neighborhood Association because she feels that, that this committee, the Traffic Committee, really talks about traffic and safety within Kaiser. Um, so it was actually her request to the committee and they talked about it and thought it was a great idea. So it was actually a citizen who came to the committee to say, why aren't you on TV like planning and obviously understands the council, but we've got other committees that are being televised and so why couldn't traffic? But I understand your comments as well. At some point, we're gonna run out of money and we won't be able to, to televise, so then we're gonna have to decide and Thank so, you for that additional yeah. information. But okay. Thank you. Mr. Burson? So my comment to uh, Dr. McGee is, is that um, there's a lot of money in this fund, and it can only be used for this. And it, it seems like the ending balance continues to go up. So even if other folks come about at six to $10,000 a pop, it's <laughs> Chris is going to disagree with me. But no, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. I have, I have a backstory. Uh, just to provide a little, a little color. Um, so the current attitude amongst folk like Comcast is that they should not have to pay PEG fees any longer. And the Federal Communications um, Group at the, at, at the country level has decided in a lot of ways that they agree with them. Uh, and so the only thing protecting us from actually still getting peg fees is the very unusual language we have in our annual contract that we are renewing for our franchise fees. So there is the great possibility if at some point we have to, we absolutely are forced to renegotiate that, the Comcast will no longer agree to the language that we currently have and we will no longer get Anything. to use these funds. And so one of the reasons we've been trying to sort of stockpile a little bit of money is so that when that day happens, we can actually run out a full year before we have to either figure out how to fund it elsewhere or to have it go away. So that's, that's the only color. That doesn't necessarily change what you're saying at all. I just wanted to give <laughs> some background. Okay. All right. JD? Uh, Mr. Epley actually made my point there. Okay. Great. All right. If there is no other discussion, there is a motion on the floor. Um, so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. No. Okay. All right. Two.
All right, motion carries. All right, law enforcement grants. I, I'm actually, I'm going to actually ask uh, <laughs> Bennett Copeland, uh, just so that he can have a little bit of time in back of a microphone to explain this fun to you. What? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I, I would love to. I'm going to put Chief Teague on speakerphone as he's driving home. So, <laughs> so for this fund, um, by and large, it's a placeholder fund in the event that we identify grants throughout the year. Um, consistently, once we identify some, we, uh, depending on the scope and the requirements of the grant, we'll come back to the city council for approval, um, especially if it requires matching funds or anything like that. Um, in the current year, the projected 2016-17, um, we received some reimbursement grants for um, some travel training kind of stuff. Um, so that's really what the 10,000 is. It's additional training that we were able to do in the police department. The 30000 for 2017-18, like I say, is, again, is just a, a placeholder in the event we identify something. Um, so with that, if you have any questions. Questions on this fund? All right. The motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve uh, the law enforcement grant fund as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the law enforcement grant fund uh, with the caveat that we can change it later. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, Housing Rehabilitation Fund. Uh, thank you, Chair. For the next two funds, the, the explanation would be basically the same except for change housing rehabilitation with energy efficiency. Um, so for this loan, this program, um, this fund is a revolving loan fund. Um, in past years, we've loaned out money um, to do housing repairs, low-income type housing repairs. We're just in the process now of waiting for that money to come back um, so that we can turn around and, and loan it back out again. Um, same thing with the energy efficiency loan. On the next page, it was for energy efficiency type of housing improvements. Again, we're just waiting for the money to come back so we can loan it back out again. Uh, questions on the Housing Rehabilitation Fund? Councilor Freeman. So is it correct to state that we're not taking any admin out of, out of these funds. So when the money's repaid, are we not allowed to take any admin money? That or is, we're just that selecting is correct. not we're, to? We're not taking admin out at this point. Um, and historically, we haven't taken admin out. I don't think they were allowed to under the agreements. Well, St. administers it, do they not? And they, uh, they get the administrative funds. Uh, these are all administered through the city here. Um, they're part of the community development is the staffing that, that actually oversees these. These are, these are different than the community, uh, the community development block grant funds that come through the city of Salem, so, which is what I think you're, you're referring to, Jerry. So it's, it's a whole separate set of money that we participate in, but Salem gets the funding and allocates it for the region. But they don't get the administrative? They do on yeah. those, but not on these. So I have a follow-up. Yep. Yeah. So this is a small pot of money. And I know we had a larger in a while ago. So would we not return these funds just so we're not having to deal with them? I mean, in all honesty, it's a, it's a small amount. And we're not taking any admin. And maybe it's not costing us a whole lot. But there, there is some administrative expense that goes with these funds and then making sure it gets to the correct people. And Well, in, in the past, we've actually outsource the administrative piece, the, the qualification stuff to the COG, um, or the Council of Governments, uh, Middle Willamette Valley Council of Governments. And that contract with them has expired, and we're kind of just waiting until we have enough money back to actually do something with. Um, while on paper, um, this is really just the cash component that we're expecting now, the actual size of the revolving loan program is much bigger because there's so much money just sitting out there. Um, I, don't have it off the top of my head, but I believe there's about 130,000 in housing rehab loans sitting out there that we're just waiting for that 140 to come back to give back out. Typically, we get that back when a house sells. Sure. Um, so in terms of giving the money back to the federal government, what we have found is that the federal government is 
better giving money away than taking oh, it back. Totally. So yeah. they would actually not have a mechanism for us to refund it back to them. Um, and then the process to defederalize it is so complex that it actually is doing m more work for our community. This way. This way. Okay. So. So so I have one more. So Tim, you had said the admin then was done by the COG Council of Governments. In the past, when we were actively issuing the loans, yes. So, how did we cover that? Was that part of our dues expense? No, that 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 came out of this. But so we did have yeah, admin yes, out of this fund yes, to correct. cover that. So, okay. But Thank we you. have not taken internal staff time for costs for these yet. So. Okay. Mr. Burson. Yeah, I just. Um, <clears throat> I know it's been a while, but. But we actually had these funds hanging around for several years that we hadn't done anything about, anything with. And they're, they're free uh, $15,000 loans for people in our community that um, don't have the funds to, say, re-roof their house, put in new windows, put in insulation, heating systems, things. And uh, there was a big push, myself included, years ago to start loaning this out. And Nate... Uh, went out and found out how to do this. And so uh, this is an excellent program for our city. I mean, you see a lot less blue tarps on top of roofs that people can't afford to replace their roof. This, When this money comes back, like you're anticipating in this fund, $30,000 coming back, that's two more people that can actually, if they qualify, that get a $15,000 no interest loan to um, rehab their home or in their next fund uh, do energy efficiency work on their home that wouldn't normally have that money. So um, this really, I think, benefits a lot of folks in this town. And I'm, and it was, if I remember right, the funds were uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars a piece when we when we first were just sitting there looking at it, loaning it out. So it, it's a substantial amount that's out there. A lot of people have taken advantage of this in the city. That is correct. We, and it has come back over the years. Has as, cycled a couple as, of times. Usually, as the house is sold, but in some cases, but there's been no uh, cutting corners on that. It has been returned, yeah. and it is an excellent. I totally agree with you. That's good bucks well spent. All right. Any other questions on the housing rehabilitation fund? Thank you. So uh, what do you think is the threshold for uh, going back to the Council of Governments to get the money out in, onto the street again? Well, my, my knee jerk is we would probably need, uh, I think by policy at some point we were saying 50% of the, the loans out there when they come back, we would go back to the COG. So, you know, e each of these has about 20 or so loans outstanding. Um, so we're really waiting for 10 of those loans to be paid back. And, you know, your, your guess is as good as mine and when will when houses sell. Well, I know that the market is very hot right now, but I think more to the point is, you know, a threshold at which it makes sense to get that money back on the street. And but versus the costs that are associated. And I would be interested if we do hit um, you know, a certain a threshold level of even fifty thousand dollars, to to know what what would that cost to get that money back sure. on the street? That could be, you know, two, three, four houses, but each one of those houses a family, and it could make the difference in that family being you know strapped for energy costs versus being able to uh, get a little further ahead. So, I would be interested, and I don't know what, how the rest of the group feels to kind of get a sense of what that threshold would look like. I could easily follow up and look at what we had paid for the administration in the past. That would be really helpful. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks. I, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but this 43.8 on line 13, that is money going back out into loans. That that is correct. We have that as a placeholder to say if if, if thirty thousand comes in, correct, you're going to loan out. In fifteen thousand, not probably another thirty thousand, but if if, uh, if if the opportunity presented in this itself, budget, correct. there is the idea of putting that money once it comes in, putting it back out into the into the home. We, we wouldn't want to restrict it to the ending fund balance. Just no, no, no. I'm so, I'm talking yeah. about sure. you put it on line thirteen forty three eight. That's just a guess. Right, I know it's just a mm -hmm. guess, but whatever comes in, um, for the most part, I mean, you have you have the intention of reloaning that money out. 
uh, to folks as it gets paid in. So we're not just holding the money again like we did years ago. That would be correct. Okay, I just, just want to be clear what the mayor was talking about. I thought we were talking about holding up to 50000 before we loaned out. Well, I think to, to probably clarify a little more, um, there's a certain point where we have to figure out what does it make sense to re-engage um, the, the COG to get them going again. Um, we don't necessarily have all the expertise in-house to do a lot of the pre-qualifications for these loans, uh, but we don't want to leave the funds locked up in ending fund balance unavailable in, in, in the event something does happen. Thank you. Any other, if there's no other questions, we'll take a motion on this fund. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the housing rehabilitation fund as it presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded, and we approve the housing rehabilitation loan or loan or housing re rehabilitation fund as proposed, with the caveat we can change it at the end. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, do we have anything to add here, or should we just go to have, the motion I have nothing count? to add. <laughs> All right. Mr. Chair, I uh, move to approve the Energy Efficiency Revolving Loan Fund as presented. I'll second. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Energy Efficiency Revolving Loan Fund budget as presented, with the caveat that we can change it later. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Kaiser Station LID Fund. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this fund accounts for the, the debt that we have associated with the Kaiser Station. Um, we assess the property owners out at Kaiser Station. They remit their money back. We turn around and send that to pay off our debt. Uh, we currently have $14,685,000 outstanding. And as we get in principal payments, we pay that down as much as we can each year. Um, we're not under obligation to pay it down, but it makes sense to reduce our overall interest cost. Um, we do have a lump sum payment at the end if we don't pay it down um, sufficiently by then, so it's important that we keep ahead of, of the principal payments. Um, the ending fund balance is what's legally restricted, I guess not legally, but required by the um, loan documentation, the loan covenants. Um, so our intent is to use the money as quickly as we can to pay it down. And with that, if you have any questions. Questions on the Kaiser Station LID? All right, take a motion. Mr. Uh, Chair, I move to approve the Kaiser Station LID fund as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Kaiser Station LID fund as presented <coughs> with the caveat that we can change it later. All those in, or is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, that gets us through all of the budgets in the book, and now we need to deal with the, um, the budget requests. Uh, it's my intention to go down th with one with one exception here at the beginning. It's to go down the, um, the the differences that have been included and ask if there's any motions. If there's a motion and a second to add this money, we'll vote on it. If there's not a motion and a second to um, add this in on each line item, we will move on to the next one. Um, the first question I have is on the uh, neighborhood associations. Um, the, it, I've, I'm, I'm wondering if there's any interest in level loading these neighborhood associations at um, $500 a piece or not. So I will put that out on the floor to see if there's any no, interest right there. over here, Mayor Clark. Okay. Mayor Clark. Um, the Greater Gubster Neighborhood Association, knowing that they could have asked for the full allocation, chose not to. Okay. So um, I would prefer to honor their request, and I would be happy to make a motion to these two neighborhood associations unless there is uh, a reason to take them separately. Any other discussion? Then I would... Uh, I'm sorry, oh. Councilor Reed. Um, <laughs> just in terms of the Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association uh, requested uh, the 400... Uh, rather than the 200 they had previously allocated. And that was primarily meant to fund the signs uh, for the announcements of the neighborhood association meetings. And so Very that important. was the reason for the additional um, 200. $200 for okay. that. Hmm. Okay, so I don't hear a motion to, to well, go I'm, ahead. Yeah. Mayor Clark. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a motion on the table then, then we'll open do a discussion. discussion. So I would right. move that we amend the general fund 
for the uh, Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association to increase their budget allocation from 200 to $400 and to reduce the Greater Gubser Neighborhood Association allocation from 500 to 200. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. So it's been moved that we, it's moved and seconded that we increase the Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association budget by $200 and we reduce the Greater Gubster um, Neighborhood Association budget by 300. Is there any discussion? Judy? Uh, can somebody tell me the population of the three neighborhoods mm. that are listed here? Are they equal in They're size? They're huge. Yeah. Huge. I understand that. I think. Well, I think southeast. The southeast neighborhood association does it not run from Chamala all the way to the Parkway, and then from River Road all the way up. Correct. So that whole area oh, okay. is the yeah. southeast. The Greater Gubser they it runs from. It's a large one, also. Lock Haven all the way to around. Country Glen mm -hmm. up around there. So they're huge. They're they're huge. And then the West Kaiser, obviously. West Kaiser. Um, River Road, mm -hmm. West, um, Mala, Chamawa, south. and then south to an end of Salem, to Salem, Salem all the way. Yeah. City yep. So West Kaiser is the Cummings Elementary. So I'm good. Yeah. Okay. 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 I hope that was all right. Yeah. Any, other, <laughs> any, uh, oh, any other discussion? Yes. yes. Councilor? Yeah, thank you. Um, I just, last year I was pleased, I was punched to see uh, Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association, SECNA, come back into being, having been a former resident of that area and involved with the Neighborhood Association. Um, I've been out ecstatic to see them appear back before City Council, coming back again, and uh, I'm just uh, thrilled that, that we've got an active Neighborhood Association coming back there, and uh, so full support of the motion. Thank you. And also, oh, uh, it's my understanding that they didn't spend uh, hardly any, if any, of that $200 that they were allocated. They, they were approved toward the end of last year anyway. Right. And so, um, I, it, to my knowledge, I don't think they have spent any of that okay. so far. So the, the bulk of the money that they are asking for is for signs and to get them <coughs> rolling. Yeah, and, and that's, I think, and, and it's, it's really, that's a good uh, strategy, too. A uh, really great way to generate interest uh, in folks coming uh, to that, those meetings. All right. Any further discussion on the motion? All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Are there any motions on the Kaiser Community Library request? Councilor Parsons. Um, yes. I The Kaiser Community Library... Um, their rent is actually that 9,936. We've been giving them 8,000. It didn't go up this year, granted, but the library is in such need of other things that if we add this money to it, they'll be able to take that extra money that they're saving from the rent and go out and get the other things that they need to, to stock that library. They're in, they're in need of things all the time. They don't always get them from the community. You know, that if we pay their whole rent for them this year, then they'll be able to, you know, like I said, to go out and get the other things they need for the library. So I'm going to make a motion that we, that we, um, round to 2,000. Round to 2,000. <laughs> make Tim's job easy. <laughs> it does. Okay. Then we actually, I'll make a motion that we actually give the library $10,000 this year. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we increase the budgeted amount for the Kaiser Community Library from 8,000 that's included in the budget to 10,000. Discussion. Councilor Freeman. Councilor Parson, can you tell me what kind of things they need? Yes. So they have to replace their computers every couple of years. They have operating systems also that they have to purchase. Um, they're, when they don't get books back, they have to sometimes restock their books. And then the utilities, sometimes they, they have to pay more for utilities. So you're welcome. Yeah, the electricity is just a killer. So, oh, I'm sorry. Um, if I Maintenance could, for the building, though, yeah. they have to help. Pay. Um, I, just the one thing that I would add is that um, when in, I'm involved in Rotary, and uh, one of the Rotary meetings I was at, uh, the incoming president, I think it's the Lake Oswego Rotary, is the is a librarian, and uh, he was kind of when I said uh, talked about our library. He said, oh, Kaiser has a library. <laughs> yeah. And to my way of thinking, um, kind of 
going to uh, Mr. Epley's whole area or, or uh, viewpoint of having balanced things in our community to make this a balanced community. I think 10,000 is money well spent um, in that regard. Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, it's no secret that I've been a supporter of our library and of literacy in our community. Uh, our library has also been able to do more outreach and uh, provide um, books and so forth. The, the Boys and Girls Club, the kids love walking down to the community center there in the civic or library. cultural center in the, the library, the museum, et cetera. Um, so they, they're trying to do more outreach, have programming that um, helps promote literacy among our young people. And yes, there's a lot of volunteer work that goes into that, but there are costs involved. And if you're gonna provide more programming, which gets more people in there, more um, activity, and then sometimes replacing books or getting the new books that people are interested in reading. It allows them to really focus on their mission, which is to promote and expand literacy in our community. And I, I would absolutely agree that this is money very well spent and has, they've been able to demonstrate that they are fulfilling that mission in our community. We're getting a return on this investment, in my opinion. Any other discussion on the motion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, is there a motion on the additional request for the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce? Excited about the library. Uh, all right, oh, oh Madam Mayor. Okay, Mr. Chair, I would move that the uh, we amend the budget to increase the direct financial support for the Chamber of Commerce from the allocated 1500 to the 2100 I'm sorry to the um, requested 3649 you don't like that that <laughs> <laughs> 700 37 just round it up round it $3700 second it's been moved and seconded that we add the amount allocated to the Kaiser Chamber. Uh, we increase it to from fifteen hundred to thirty seven hundred. Discussion. Councilor Parsons. Yeah, I would just like to say that the chamber over this past year, with the new leadership and the new board, has done a tremendous job, not only with the bringing in new business, but with community outreach, mm -hmm. and I and I think that that the executive director Daniel did a great job tonight of of really pushing out what she was gonna spend that money on. So I'm gonna support this. Further discussion? Councilor Freeman? I, I would echo that as well. And um, a bunch of us saw Danielle this morning and made asked her to be sure she was here. And she wasn't planning on being here when um, she changed her schedule to be here. So I appreciate that as well. Um, she made sure because some of the information I had was incomplete. I couldn't open my, Chris, or Tim and I have already talked about with my iPad, some things didn't open and I even looked at some of the printed material that left off some information. And so, and it's probably that fillable form, Tim, that you and I were talking about. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate Danielle putting something together that really uh, was complete and answered questions from the incomplete information that I had. Um, and they have been out doing a lot and they have totally regrouped uh, with new staff and a new board, so they're really making a good faith effort to be a true partner in the city. So I would support this as well. All right. Madam, Mayor. Madam Mayor? Um, I'd like to clarify one thing as well. Uh, the city has been a member of the chamber uh, for many years, so the, the change in funding, um, Danielle put this into her proposal regarding our membership, but I believe that's been consistent, has it not? Chris, uh, has it just shown up under a different line item, or is it, con I believe it's included in our memberships. She's including this in her budget request for the chamber, but isn't that a separate line item? Uh, Thunder, th that, yeah, is that is correct. So the actual amount in the past what, that we have allocated to the chamber for the last several years has been $1,200, and that has been targeted to the community calendar specifically on their website. It was a resource that we were sharing with them in order to help uh, push out um, online events that were happening community-wide. And the chamber was able to host that on their website and keep it up. And that was something that we invested in. So the real change here then is not the, um, is between, it's not the membership portion, 
but it's the um, primarily the visitor services support. 1,200 of that is, because uh, they're talking about website maintenance mm -hmm. and so forth. That, uh, so this doesn't increase from the 1,200 to 2,500 where they're going to be actually providing more, um, more services, get their website uh, more user friendly. There's a whole lot of things that they can do with that. And I believe it's going to serve our community as well as our business community uh, in our online presence. And we all know how powerful that is for getting facts, figures, and more importantly, the flavor of our community um, out beyond our borders. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? First, Ron. So uh, I'm sorry, what's the clarification on the amount of? The direct financial support, um, the way this was put, includes our membership, but that's actually already covered under another line item. Okay, so what's, what's the actual amount? So what's the actual amount then if it's not 3700 Because the, the amount of the Chamber of Commerce in the other line item is $500. Yeah, and it's 499 on their form. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's 500 five, in okay. the budget. Yeah. I, th I think regardless of what is in here, their direct ask is for that additional $2,200. Right, so that's the increases. Which is the, which is the rounding up from 3649 to 3700. It rounds that 2149 to 2200. So that, that is what they're asking. Everything else here is already in the budget. Already in oh, gotcha, okay. Yes. So. That's already in there. So this is specifically for the Kaiser Lifestyle Magazine and for visitor services support. Correct. Gotcha. That helps. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, the next one on the list is a $250 request from the peer court. Mr. Chair, I would make a motion to uh, increase the peer court uh, by 250 to the requested 10,750 amount. And I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we give an or we allocate an additional two hundred and fifty dollars to Peer Court. Uh, discussion. Money well spent. Yes. All right. Yep. All, right. Oop, All those in. Oh, oh, sorry. Just, just one question. Just from what Chief Teague said earlier, that in three years the federal grant money will go away. So in three years we're going to be looking at thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. More. Okay. More. <laughs> More. Than this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it possible that, that there will be other grants available, or there might be? It's possible that the federal funding will be reallocated. We just don't know. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Mr. Motion. Chair. Yeah. Uh, it is now time per our budget schedule, so I'm asking whether or not the committee would like to continue this evening. Oh, oh, well, it's uh, we have um, two, two two more, more of these, and, and then, then I, and I know then I'm just asking oh, okay. just to make sure because <laughs> we are I at our time limit. I strongly urge you, that we finish this up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. you diligence. And I'll second that. Th thank you for keeping us on, <laughs> on <right>. track. <laughs> so, all right, um, Mid or Mid Willamette Homeless Initiative Transition Team, five thousand dollar request. Mr. Chair, I would um, ask or move that the uh, budget committee recommend or. Funding the Mid Willamette Homeless Initiative Transition Team for five thousand dollars. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we add five thousand dollars to the to the budget for the Mid Willamette, Willamette Homeless Initiative Transition Team. Discussion. Yes, I appreciate the mayor's excellent presentation. Uh, however, this if there was ever a camel's nose under the tent, it's here. We're uh, without any contractual arrangement other than our normal one with Cog. Uh, we're going to start a new program uh, for $5,000 to help the homeless. Uh, we heard this morning what the churches are doing in that respect. Uh, I think this is a very questionable uh, expenditure of funds to solve a very large, complicated problem. Uh, we'll go, well, Madam Mayor. I'll, I'll yield to Mr. Burson. Okay, Mr. Burson. So, Again, I would just go back to the presentation that, you know, there's this kickoff money, but I'm assuming it's going to be back before us again because there was some operating costs that uh, you wanted in, in future years. But, again, it has to be tied to some type of results. I mean, I just can't have, or I can't have, 
I, I don't agree with just putting money out there without, like I said, you know, some some real quantified, you know, you can tell me how many less children are on the street, how many how many houses we've created for people uh, that have got them off the street. Because uh, I also uh, agree with uh, Dr. McGee that I'm a little leery of this expenditure too to begin with, uh, just kind of trusting that it's going to happen out there. But uh, you know, I'll yield to the mayor and her brilliance in this area that uh, that the results are going to happen. So, Madam Mayor, thank you. Uh, just to speak to the motion, um, I absolutely agree. There have to be deliverables and there has to be accountability. So none of these funds will be expended unless the position is uh, the the discussion and then the contract is established at the Council of Governments. So there, not a single dime will go out until that is done. And then there will be a discussion about an agreement with the city, the member cities or counties in uh, the case of Marion County on what that's going to look like. So this is the beginning. This is saying that we are going to make the funds available, but not a dime will go out the door until we have something in writing about how that is going to be used and what the contractual expectations are. And I, the, at the discussions at the transition team mirror those that happened at the Mobile Lament Homelessness Initiative Task Force. Deliverables and reporting out are required for uh, this program. So, yes, that will happen. Dr. McGee. Uh, is COG prepared or have they indicated that they will supply the support? There needs to be a secretary, probably a computer. Uh, and my experience with COG is, I know you're on the COG board, but uh, unless this is really tied down with the contract, it is uh, really guesswork of what, what this money will ever uh, occur to. And even if it was, even if they accepted it and they uh, uh, dole it out next time, what will our share be next time? We're, we're really flying in the dark on this one. Madam Mayor. Um, I do have an answer for that. Uh, we've been working with the uh, executive director on what the direct and indirect costs were going to be. The Council of Governments will be contributing the rent and telephone for the space, and so there will be some, some support. The indirect costs have been factored into the cost for that employee. So again, these are all um, going to be part of the presentation to the Council of Governments board, and they will make the final decision about whether this is going to go forward. At that point, then, um, the allocation would be requested. But until that is done and has been um, approved by the board, uh, no money will be moved. I would be happier with your motion, Kathy, if, uh, if it indicated that the money would not go out until the contract has been agreed upon. And if that was in your motion, I would support it because I don't think that's going to ever occur. Is that a friendly amendment? Uh, yeah, I would make that as a friendly amendment, that there that we actually see a contract with these people before we, and the, another question, has the staff person already been selected? No, the, the process of uh, recruiting for that position cannot begin until the uh, contract, until this has been approved by the Council of Governments Board of Directors. That presentation and discussion will happen on June 21st. Now, the, uh, you read the newspaper article, same as I did. It would indicate that uh, perhaps a staff person had already been committed to. No, that is not true. All right. Uh, there will be an open recruitment for that, and that will be then uh, conducted by the Council of Governments to recruit for that position. Uh, but uh, regarding your friendly amendment that these funds not be uh, allocated until there is a written uh, agreement with the Council of Governments, is that your friendly amendment? To include the future of it. I was, I'm more concerned about what the division of the funds are going to be next year and the next year, because this is clearly uh, a new bureaucracy that's being developed here with all the problems thereof. So this is a one-time ask. This is not. Uh, this is a one-time ask. So what I'm. What I heard was that the allocation of these funds only go out when there's an agreement, and I, I have no problem with that. I can't speak to the future because how, what that's going to look like then will be a budget allocation for next year. And then the city manager will bring that, um, if we are going to use that service from the Council of Governments, that'll be part of our due structure. Uh, 
just a question. Can we, can we deal with the friendly amendment first? Is I, where, who, it did, pertains? Okay, I was see. It, it, is it okay with the person who seconded the motion? Yes, because that was I was going to ask if we could do that. Okay. So thank you. Okay. So thank now, you. Okay. Now. Jerry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I I tend to agree with the doctor in a lot of that stuff. If if as long as we have the ability as a sit as a budget committee to reassess this on a yearly basis or a semi-annual basis, because I know there's years put into this study to create what you're trying to do here. And I know that you may not get a, re a, a good return of data back the first year. It may, take, it may take six to eight months to fully develop what can happen. And you, want, you may not find out what's going to happen for maybe the second year. So as long as we have the ability at, this, at the budget committee level here in the city to approve this for the continuing years each time without it just being, you know, a, a continuing obligation without the ability to do so, then I would be for it as well. In order to do that, we'd have to be uh, a look at the distribution from COG because that's where the increase will occur. We'll never come back to this budget again. We Does did. Act, we mean? did. We did approve in the email that we got from Tim yesterday, we did get a, a, in the dues and subscriptions, we have a number for COG, and so we can watch it in that number. Yeah. So what I, well, Dr. Number. McGee, what, it's a big I can, number, yeah. what we can do is provide, because we get an actual bill from COG that creates this number, and we can simply include that as a, sh as a handout for this group, so you can see where all of those dues are going, and that piece will be part of it, yeah. and it's an opt-in. So if you want to utilize that service, you buy it each year. Um, so this group can have full authority as to whether or not to buy that service from year to year. Mm -hmm. So we'll be happy to provide that sheet for you so you can see the entire breakout each year, right. if that makes you more comfortable with that. I'm, I'm willing to take, a, to take a chance on this $5,000 in the fact that um, this $5,000 is more than what my business and the neighboring business to us are going to have to spend in the next few weeks to majorly redo our landscaping to keep homeless people from camping in it. So, uh, and then also, uh, uh, Lieutenant Copeland was, was nice enough to stop by today, and he's been by several times, and if this frees up him to not have to come <laughs> check our parking lots, uh, I think it's money well spent, so I'm in favor. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. One no vote. Motion carries. All right, we have a request for $2,000 for Kaiser United. Going once, going twice. All right. And then that gets us through. The last one on our list was the was the request from the. But we're, we're not going to do that one. So we're going to that one's will be will we go will be going to council. Well, if, if somebody, well, yes. Ms. Mr. Chair, if somebody wanted to move that, that could happen. It was my suggestion that that would be a good place to put that. But if somebody feels strongly that that it happened here, um, it certainly could. I, I quite honestly think that is most appropriately handled at the council level. I would because that's how we've always done requests like that in the past is on a case-by-case -case basis at the council level. Right. All right. All righty, so that deals with all of the, uh, the additions to the budget. So now we need a motion to approve the budget for the fiscal year 2017-2018 as amended. Can I? Can I yeah. Oh, go Just ahead. a question. Did we... Uh, Go through the eight thousand for the solar eclipse event. Yeah, we did that uh, when we passed the community <coughs> okay. uh, center budget. So that that's been done. Mr. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I um, I need to declare a potential conflict of interest since uh, we found out where my six hundred dollars is coming from. It's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> it actually, maybe <laughs> but it's a potential conflict, conflict of, interest. of interest because uh, this. Uh, board or this 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 committee uh, re makes a recommendation to the council, which will make the final recommendation on on uh, paying that six hundred dollars, which may or may not go to uh, you. enriching me. So um, I just have to make that. Not before. actual, just a potential. It's a potential conflict. I'm still able to vote. That's yes. correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Chair, I would uh, make a motion to approve the City of Kaiser budget for fiscal year 2017-2018 as amended by the Budget Committee. Um, second. 
Is there? It's a moved and seconded that we pass a motion to approve the City of Kaiser budget for the fiscal year 2017-2018 as amended by this committee, and we cannot change it after this. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right. Mr. Chair, I would uh, uh, move to impose the full permanent tax rate of Two dollars point two point zero eight three eight dollars per one thousand of assessed value on the tax rolls of the city of Kaiser for fiscal year 2017-2018. And I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we approve a per full permanent tax rate of two point a two point zero eight three eight dollars per thousand of assessed value on the tax rolls for the city of Kaiser for fiscal year 2017-2018. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Is there anything else anybody needs to get off their chest? Anything that we missed? Great job. Yeah, I, I want to just thank everybody on this committee, um, all of our, our volunteer uh, committee members. Uh, of course, the city council, but... And non-volunteer. Yeah, and, <laughs> and our staff as well. You guys did awesome. I would also like to thank the staff for the work, not for this budget, but for the budgets that came before it, because we don't find ourselves in the same mess that the state is now having having $10 billion <laughs> of new all funds revenue and, and still needing to come ask for more. So I, I thank you very much for the work you've done leading up to this point. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. If I may. Yeah. yeah. I, I really do want to thank this group. I mean, the, the input that you give is important for democracy to occur in this town, and it's fantastic. We appreciate it. I also want to thank Tim. Tim, you did a great job putting great this job. document together. Here, here. Here, here. So, and I'd like to thank all of our department directors for holding the line on expenses and doing an excellent job of spending the money that is uh, entrusted to you and to us as though it is your own out of your own account and I appreciate that so thank you Tim? I, I really don't have anything to add to that but I, I am very appreciative of uh, everyone's efforts um, all of the committee and the departments it, it is a group effort I couldn't put this document together by myself so I'm um, with that I'm truly grateful thank you all right. all right thank you all we are adjourned Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that one, right?